Life is great. I just spilled water all over my fucking self like a goddamn child. That was amazing. It was great. <laughs> all right. Been a while. Been a while. Let's see if I remember how to stream. <laughs> it's always been a while. Been very busy these past days. All right. <clears throat> we are here with more. Actually, let me do something real quick because I'm going to up that audio right there. All right. We are back. Hi. Welcome, one and all, to more Phoenix Wright. Let's get into it. Where we last left off. Well, where we last left off, I don't even. We didn't. I don't think we even, uh. We didn't even. We didn't even start the fifth episode, did we? The fifth trial. The last trial. The trial to end every trial. By the way, Francesca has. Francesca. Francesca hasn't been in this game whatsoever, yes? I'm a little disappointed about that. Gotta say. And if she was in the game, she probably was like, you know, a brief, like, flashback or memory or some shit. But, gotta say, what's going on? Right? Phoenix has yet to, uh, to, like, see Edgeworth this whole entire game. Like, we've seen Edgeworth, but we've seen old school Edgeworth. We haven't seen big boy Edgeworth. Where is he? What's going on? Ashley, isn't he in Germany? Aren't they both in Germany right now? Something like that? But, we're back. We're doing it. We're already starting with words I can't even pronounce. That's great. The treasured Kurain village heirloom, whose name means seven branch sword. That sword is chipped to all hell. It's said that this sacred sword represents life itself. Though the branches may appear to be infinite, the choice is limitless. Like our destinies, the sword comes to but one end, one merciless point. And when the silver cord, the fragile thread that binds us to this world is severed. The illusion is revealed. And the implicality of fate. Oh shit, I couldn't even read it. Damn it. <laughs> All right, February 6, 9.48 a.m., right in co-law offices. Welcome, Shark. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Nick. Hey, Nick, want to see a dead body? Whoa. <laughs> yeah, what is it? You know, oh, God. It's been far too long. I love this music. Oh, <laughs> thanks for the reset. <laughs> God, it's been six months. Oh shit, it's been six months? <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Anyways. Thank you for the reason. You know how I got spiritual powers, unlike you? Hey Nick, you know how I'm awesome and you suck? <laughs> I'm sure. You're a spirit medium, after all. But just like you, if I don't keep my powers sharp, they get dull, right? Um, I guess so, yeah. Glad you agree. Okay, Pearly, you're up. Pearls. So, that's why we need to go to spe- Were you here the whole time, Pearl? What the f- Whoa! <laughs> what am I looking at? Is that Dahlia? That's Dahlia. What's going on? So that's why we need to go on a spiritual <laughs> hotspot tour. Huh? I'm lost. What's this magazine you're showing to my face? 
to want to set the expectations for this case too high or nothing. But I think this one of the best case in the whole series. Alright. It's the New Year's issue of Occult. Winter Spiritual Location Special. Oh. Pro looks happy. Maximize your spiritual powers with just one night of intensified training. Oh. Sounds too good to be true. I'll say. Sounds more like a scam than me. It's at a spiritual retreat called Hazakura Temple. It's way up in the mountains, and I bet it's nice and cold. Just perfect for training. No, I definitely don't want to go. You know, I think I've heard of the spirit. I think I've heard of the temple before. It's a famous channeling dojo. It's hard for even real spirit mediums like us to make reservations up there. Reservations for a temple? You serious? Don't worry. I've already made special reservations just for us. Yeah. And I signed up for the special course. That's nice. And the timing couldn't be better. Since we don't have a case right now, anyways. <laughs> hey, Maya, we don't have a case. Let's go make one. Alrighty, then. It's settled. Well, come on. Don't just stand there. Start packing your stuff. Yeah, Mr. Nick. You better start packing your stuff. Alright, Pearl. Damn. <laughs> God damn. Huh? M me? Why do I gotta go? Well, we have to be accompanied by someone over 20 years old. Hey, I don't have anything to do with spirit power. The only thing I can channel is the TV. <laughs> That's great. That's a great line. I like that. So, is there a heated pool at this Hazakura temple? Nope, but you can stand under a freezing waterfall. Now, why would I do that? I mean, me as Phoenix, why would I do that? But me in real life, I would totally do that. <laughs> I love cold showers. Cold showers are amazing. Sorry. But I think I'll pass. I hate cold places. What? No way! How can you be so selfish? Come on, Mr. Nick. Look at this place. Doesn't it look beautiful? Nope. Not going. I'm gonna be nice and toasty at home. What? What the? What is... What is it, Mr. Nick? Let me see that magazine. This nun. Is she a friend of yours or something, Nick? This girl. It's... My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. And I just want to say, it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. Honestly, how can any woman ever count on you for anything? You disgust me. But it can't be. She was found guilty, and she should still be in prison. Mr. Nick? I'll go. Huh? As a Kura Temple. I said I'll go. Yay! Oh, we're gonna start. Maya, I want you to stay super close to me. You too, Pearls. I don't need no murders happening on my watch. <laughs> so consider ordering Phoenix Wright metal pin, but it's like $10. Pins usually go for like around seven, right? So I don't think it'd be bad. You know, like a good quality pin. Assuming that you're gonna, you know, be stylizing with it. By the way, hey, SP, how's it going? Hope everything's fine with you. Yeah, isn't that great, Pearly? Yes, thank you, thank you, Mr. Nick. You do anything for Mystic Maya, right? Even walk over burning coals, right? Can't say no, I can't say no. I mean, after that whole hostage ordeal. Delia Hawthorne. <laughs> Why does the... Alright, hold up. Why does the nun to the left look like she just came out the Bronx? She's like, listen, I got a nice deal for you over here. One-way ticket to heaven. <laughs> I got you. I knew there was no way she could possibly be at that temple. But I just had to see for myself. Who this nun really was. Maybe she'll be like, I have been enlightened, Phoenix. She's probably gonna put on that bullshit. It's so cold! Why aren't you wearing a fucking jacket, Maya? Maybe you should put on something warmer for a change, <laughs> exactly. Well, it's supposed to be cold, it's training. 
Her teeth are chattering so loudly, and all I can do is make out what she's saying. Wow, Mr. Kamaya. So this is famous. <laughs> I love how Pearl is unaffected because she's stronger. <laughs> Pearly? I... <laughs> well, well, well. How nice to see you here. Welcome to our temple. Oh, thank you. Oh, my, my, my. Thank you for coming all this way. Come now. Come now. You must have been cold. What's with the past tense? We're freezing into human. I didn't even get to read that shit. <laughs> well, we are high up in the mountains after all. In any case, we shouldn't speak here. We should speak somewhere with a lot of drinks and possibly poison. Thank you. I was starting to think... Oh, yes, yes. I almost forgot to introduce myself. I'm the head nun here at the temple. My name is Bikini? What are we doing here? What's going on? What's happening? I don't like where this name is going. B Bikini? That's right! Actually, that's my temple name. What do you think? It's a traditional- it's traditional to have one, and I wanted something that has a nice image to it. So, I thought, why not choose a bikini? Besides, it makes me seem younger. Did they really have to, like, make her cheeks jiggle? What was that about? <laughs> it was, I didn't expect that! It certainly does. Oh, I signed up for your special course. Well, my, my, my. Quite brave of you, considering how cold it is. Young people can be so reckless with their health. Don't blame me if you become one of those you channel. <laughs> reckless? What? Maybe you should take it easy tonight, Mr. Maya. You can come back another day. But you went through all that trouble that- Yes, 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 that's right. You come all this way, so please enjoy yourselves. There's still time before supper. So, why don't you have a look around? I'll do exactly that. Oh, is this how we got up here? Oh look, it's one of those snow motorcycle things. Most people call that a snowmobile, you know? Snow motor <laughs> snow motorcycle thing. Snow blow meal. <laughs> what? <laughs> Same thing. Too bad we didn't invite Desiree. I bet- oh man, I totally forgot about Desiree. She's great. I'm surprised she wasn't evil. So surprised she wasn't evil. Just- just the perfect like, oh, you're up to some shit. <laughs> but nope, she's actually a good guy. I bet she could race like the winds on the snowmobile. Or maybe she'll give me a ride on this snow- on this blow of snow- what the fuck? <laughs> blow snowmobile. I told you, it's snowmobile! You're, bare, you're making me, like, twist my tongue. I don't like that. <laughs> Alright. What does it say? I can't read that. Where the fuck are the subtitles? What do you think, Nick? Pretty awesome gate, huh? It sure is. It looks pretty well-maintained, too. This thing kind of puts your hometown to shame, Maya. Yeah, well, a lot of things happen in Kirin Village. We used to be a lot richer back when people hired us to perform channelings. Oh, I see. But now the place looks a bit run down. I guess I was just born in the wrong time. It looks like the main hall where we'll be staying tonight. From here, wait, we're, we're staying in the main hall? Are there no rooms? From here, it looks like one of those ice hotels you always hear about. They gotta have a heater or something in there, don't you think? I don't wanna die. I'm not worried. I brought my hot water bottle. Did you bring one for me? What are you talking about, Nick? Who carries around two hot water bottles? If the cold doesn't kill me, the Ice Queen over here will finish the job. <laughs> Amazing. Channeling Dojo, the other nun. Yeah, tell me. Well, we gotta ease our way into the conversation, right? So what's Channeling Dojo anyways? Oh my, my. You don't even know that? Forgive him, sister. For he knows not. Well, well, well. Just call me Bikini. Forget the sister part. A channeling dojo is basically a spiritual power training ground. 
We have a special holy item prepared here to help people boost their spiritual powers. Holy items? If you train an entire evening surrounded by these items, uh, it's quite mysterious. The spiritual power of these items seem to envelop you. Wow. She must have... I just imagine, like, Maya doing her training and then fucking... Mia just channels through her and she's like, THAT BITCH OVER THERE! Starts choking the life out of her. <laughs> just some motherfucking hot water bottle. Well, she must have just gotten off the trolley from the land of make-believe. Me and Barbara used to take the trolley. You must be incredibly devoted to, to be interested in that such like, wait, what? <laughs> I had a stroke, couldn't speak, and then I just pressed the button like nothing happened. It's a training session where you sit on a block of spirit ice and chant, chant a spell. 30,000 times, all while being showered in freezing cold spiritual water. Hope you enjoy your hot water bottle now. It's February now, right? You have to be careful this time of year. If you don't watch it, you'll catch pneumonia or maybe even die from hypothermia. So be careful, you hear? How am I supposed to be careful? Oh no, I know I shouldn't have signed Mystic Maya up for this. Well, it's your problem now. Um, sister, about this picture. Well, well, look at that. I must say, I look rather divine here, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Unforgettable in every way. You mean it? Oh, I knew it. The makeup was pretty tough, but Iris helped me out. Iris. The cute little girl in the photo. She looks just like me, doesn't she? We're just a small temple here, so she and I run the entire place. Really? That kind of sounds... Sorry to cut in, but... This Iris? Where is she right now? Oh, just you listen. You haven't come all this way up here just to find a girlfriend, have you? Pearl? You sit! Bad! No, no, no. That's not what I had in mind at all. I came to find an ex-girlfriend, actually. Anyways, Iris is in the Inner Temple preparing for this evening. Inner Temple? Yes, that's right. Iris will be back this evening. I guess she's preparing some poison, just mixing some herbs around. She's like, I gotta do this. Some of this. I'm about to fucking poison these motherfuckers. <laughs> Why don't you have a look at the main hall for now? So, she's in the inner temple, huh? Thank you. Suspension bridge. Oh. Suspension bridge? Why does that seem so ominous to me? <laughs> Heavenly Hall. <gasps> no. This isn't the same bridge as before, right? It can't be. Wow, look at this broken down old bridge, Nick. I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, look at the big canyon below us. Hey, there's a river down there. It looks like it's flowing really fast. I don't like this, Maya. What's wrong, Nick? You look like you've seen a ghost. Maya, can you, like, stand behind me? I think you'll be safer. I'm just not very good with heights. Oh. Hey, I got it. Maybe you should face your fear and try hurling yourself off the edge. You know? One, two, three. Jump! Just pushes me off. It might be just what you need to get over your fear of heights. Yeah, death is a real good way to overcome phobias, all right. Anyways, it sure looks like a rickety bridge. Can't argue there. It's probably That's probably why they call it Dusky Bridge. Read it again, Maya? It says Dusky Bridge. Well, it's practically the same thing. You know what, Maya? I like, I like how you think. By the way, welcome, Breezy. How you doing? I hope everything's well on your end. a phone? 
Can't believe there's a public phone here. Who would ever use it? The people who live here, I guess? I doubt they have any real phones here. Yeah. But it took like 20 minutes to walk here from the main hall. It would have been smarter of them to build the main hall here, don't you think? Maybe you should work on channeling someone who makes logical sense, Maya. Jesus. Okay, Phoenix. Put on heavy-handed there. Is that our footprints? Come on, Nick. Why don't we hop across the bridge? It'll be fun. I'm not so sure about that. Looks like a bunny hopping across the bridge would destroy it. Okay, Nick. Then let's try to find a cute, fluffy little bunny and test your theory. She said, listen, I'm okay with bunnies dying. <laughs> we can sacrifice one of the science. <laughs> That's right. There sums up... Uh, that right there sums up the fundamental difference between sane and insane. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? <laughs> Glad to hear everything's going well. My fucking head itches. Oh, God. Scratchy, scratchy. Itchy, tasty. There's a narrow path going off in a different direction than that of the main hall. The sign here is so old, the text seems to have vanished. It says Heavenly Hall, it says Clear as Day. Are you, you blind, Maya? Path leads to a wooden staircase that goes down to the bottom of the canyon. Wait, it goes down and it's called Heavenly Hall? I don't believe that. <laughs> okay. I'll write wooden staircase on it then. Do you really think that's necessary? You have to be blind not to see the stairs. Well, it can't hurt. Just pass me a pencil, okay? Graffiti is a crime, Maya. Aww. But it's so cool. <laughs> have to mark my area. My territory. <laughs> that looks like a giant pickle. Or pear. But it's not, though. It's just a... A wooden statue, I guess. Actually, is it wooden? Or is it gold? And it just has, like, moss over it. Oh, God, I hope it doesn't have moss over it. It's kind of... Kind of dirty when you think about it. <laughs> the main hall. I think it's even colder in here. Um, Mr. Nick, do you smell that? It smells like meat and gravy. I never thought I would smell the scent of gravy. I can't, my brain can't think of what that scent is. It just smells like meat, right? I mean, you make real gravy, you make it out of the, out of the fat. Out of the good, out of the goodness, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're right. I guess it's pot roast for tonight. Weird. I thought they would serve something a little more, well, traditional. What are you talking about, Nick? You think monks and nuns just sit around eating rice gruel all the time? Yes, yes I do. Mr. Kamaya is right. I hope there's mashed potatoes too. I love mashed potatoes. I personally don't. What a cute little acolyte. Greetings to you all. Who the fuck are you? You have, you certainly have a presence about you. Oh, hello. Wow, this lady makes Maya look like like a 6.810 on the weirdness scale. Her outfit. Did you come here for the special course too? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Actually, I'm... Yes, Pearl? You're... You're... You're Miss Elise... D I can't... What the fuck? How do I say that name? Dushinum? Is that how you pronounce that? Miss Elise Dushinum? I... We're just gonna call you Elise. How about that? <laughs> how about that? We'll just do that. Yes, that's right. You know of me. My name... My name is Pearl Fay. I'm your biggest fan. Who's she, Nick? I don't know, why the fuck are you asking me? I see it now. Zavari, a fortune teller. I got all your books. Huh. 
What a sweet thing to say. And please, call me Elise. Yes, please, call her Elise, because I can't pronounce that name. Um, books? Mr. Nick, don't you know anything? Don't you even know who she is? Well, no. An author, maybe? Yes, and an illustrator of picture books. You make children books? Picture books, huh? Oh, now I get it. Hmm. Tell me about yourself. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't know who you are. I don't get a lot of chances to really enjoy picture books. It's alright, I take no offense to that. My books are nothing but simple stories for children. And really beautiful pictures too, Miss Elise. Your books always make me feel as if my heart has been purified. Imagine a child saying this to their favorite author. You'd just be like, all right, you're definitely not going to commit murders when you grow up. It makes me feel very happy to hear you say that. I do have to admit, she certainly seems like a kind of sensitive lady. Perfect murderer material. Miss Elise won an award last year for her book, The Magic Bottle. Yes, a friend of mine secretly submitted a story I had written to a publisher. They liked it so much that they asked if it was alright to make it into a book. Wow, it must have really been a great story. Maybe I should try to write a children's book too. If I do, you can secretly send it to the publisher for me, Nick. Recently, just completely ignore Maya, you're just like... <laughs> he, Nick's just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, nobody asks. Recently, I've accepted a sort of apprentice, you may say. The apprentice? He calls himself Lawrence. Lawrence the Okay, well I'm not I'm not doing I'm not doing that last name. I believe he's off doing some landscape sketches now. Oh Lawrence Oh wait what? Oh, on Lawrence's behalf as well. I'd like to thank you for your support. Of course, Miss Elise, anything for you. Why'd you come here? Um why'd you come to Harzu uh that 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 can't speak. Why'd you come to Harzak? Azakura. Hmm. Azakura. Gotta say it. Gotta get it out. Gotta spit it out. Gotta speak. Gotta do it. Why'd you come to Hotsukura? Uh, that. Fuck. It's so hard to say fast. Why'd you come to the temple, Miss Elise? Why are you here? Are you here to do some spiritual training? No, that's not it. I'm actually here to gather materials for a new book I'm working on. Whoa. I can't wait to read it. Pearl is completely taken with her. I wanted to do a book with a more Japanese feel to it this time. So, is that why you're dressed like the way you are? The children have a certain image of me in their minds. I don't want to disappoint them. So just in She said, I'm gonna head up to this frozen temple in the middle of buttfuck nowhere. But just in case there's some children there, I gotta fancy myself up. You know, carry the staff, do my Hocus Pocus, and then watch Hocus Pocus. Blu-ray version, because it's great. <laughs> what can I say? She really is a sweet lady, until she starts moitering people. Wow, Miss Elise, you're dressed up like a mountain nun. Yes, the good people here were kind enough to let me borrow this. I'm wearing training clothes underneath my robe as well. I want a staff like that. And then we ignored Maya. Keeping up the image. You like the yeah, just like the Kardashians, you gotta keep up the image. Anyone might be watching at any time. <laughs> Oops, didn't mean to press that button. I was left. You you like the crystal spear? It's real amethyst, you know. Maybe we'll find one like that up here in the mountains. Good luck, Nick. I know I know you'll find me one wait, what? I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna find you nothing, Maya. We're here to look for dead bodies. Well, you have excuse me now. Is Elise gonna be the one that dies? I hope she's not the one that dies. I have to go help with the dinner preparations. Wow, you mean you're cooking dinner tonight? That's right. Would you like to help too, Pearl? Yes, yes. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I wanna help with whatever I can. Pearls look like she just won the lottery. I'll help too then. No. No, you won't, Maya. 
I have no faith in your cooking abilities. No, it's fine. Please don't worry about it. Feel free to relax and explore the area with your friend. Okay, that's weird that you just stopped her. Huh? But... Oh, yes. Please take this. I think it will be of help to you. It's a map of the area. Oh, God, it is the same cliff. Ah, oh, fucking hell. That's not good. It's a map of the area. We wouldn't want you to get lost now, would we? The inner temple. There it is, on the other side of the bridge. Well, if you insist, I guess we'll take a chance to go check out the other temple. Okay, I'll see you two later, then. Remember, you're not allowed to fight. But you're allowed to do other stuff. Come on, Nick. Let's go. At least we'll stay warm if we keep moving. I gotta know what the hell this is. There's a laughably large Magatama on the altar. If I can see, if I can see Psyche Logs with the tiny Magatama I've got, I can only imagine what kind of power this bad boy has under its hood. It's all dilapidated. <laughs> all right. Time to go get murdered! Huh? Where'd Sister Bikini go? I guess she went to the inner temple. To go help the other nun out. Oh, right. I think her name is Iris? Y yeah. That was it. I want to find out who Iris really is. But I'm scared of what I'll find. What was the other name she used? Was that Iris as well? Was that her, like, you know, her fake name after she faked her death? Or was it something else? I can't remember. I can't remember. It's been too long. Alright. Maya, don't die. Whoa. That bridge was shaking like cello in, in an earthquake. And at least half of the wood on the rickety bridge was rotting, I bet. Not to mention the last part only had like one board left on it. All right, Maya, damn. What's wrong with you? Your face is all green. Can you not pick on... Can you not pick on me for a second? I'm still trying to get over the shock that we made it safely across the death trap. Yeah, I guess I'm a bit surprised too. Yikes. That temple is, a, is in bad shape. Looks like it can collapse at any time. I guess people don't use it too often. Is this really where you go on the train tonight? That has to be it. It's kind of creepy around here. Like a ghost might jump out at you. You're scared of ghosts, my You! Miss fucking I channeled the ookie spookies through me. You're scared of ghosts? The spirit medium afraid of ghosts. Isn't it ironic, don't you think? Okay. Willingly gives her body to the ghost. But I'm terrified. Into the training hall. This looks like a dungeon! What the f What is this? What am- where am I? Man, look at this place. It's just a tiny freezing cold- I better not get locked up in here. I better not get locked up in here. The only reason Pearl didn't come with us, she's just gonna throw us in there and lock us up. So this is where you'll both be training, huh? Uh, what do you mean, both? I'm the only one. Really? But I thought, Pearl's just a little kid. She couldn't handle this kind of intense training. So says the girl who I can barely hear over the teeth chattering. Anyways, the real training room must be behind that door over there. Hmm, yep, definitely getting the feeling it's back there. Even I can sense that there's something supernatural about the cavern behind that door. Um... You evil creature! Be gone! Get away from me! 
Excuse me, but who are you? I should be asking you that. You're... Hi there! We're just looking around since we're going to be staying here tonight. I have no words for you! Is something wrong? Just... Feeling a lot of feelings right now, Maya. I actually am. Uh, no, it's nothing. You lying bitch. You fucking... I wonder why she spaced out like that, don't you, Nick? Did you say something, Maya? Not you too, Nick. I... My name is Iris. I'm one of the nuns here at the temple. I'm Maya Faye. It's a pleasure to meet you. The pleasure is mine. Oh, please excuse me. I have some, uh, chores to attend to. She sure is beautiful. And a bit spacey, I, I guess. I guess she's just not used to talking with urban... Wait, what? I can't even say it. I can't even say this word. What is that? Sophisticates? Is this fish heights? I've never seen that word a day before in my life, but I'm not going to pretend that I have. Nick? That girl. It can't be. What the hell is this ooky spooky thing? A hanging scroll. It doesn't look... Are you okay, Maya? What is it? Why'd you scream like that? That's... the scroll. It's a super scroll. It's my mother. A lot of emotions are happening now. What? It's Misty Fay, the master of the Curian School of Channeling. Are you sure? Yes. That crest at the top of the scroll. That's the special mark of the masters of our tradition. So, that's what the mark means. Hmm. Did they kill your mom? Listen, I said, I think I said it in a previous stream, at some point in one of the Phoenix Wright games, we have to meet the mom. Hold up. Wait a minute. Hold up. No. Wait. No! Mind blown. Is there a possible chance that Elise is her mom, but we just don't know it because it's been years and she's aged? What is it? Nothing. It's just that I last saw her over 15 years ago. Oh, fucking hell. If it wasn't for the crest, I would have... <laughs> I wouldn't have even known it was her. My own mother. And I can't even recognize her face. Aww. Aww. Too many emotions. Too many emotions. Is there a dead body in here? Look at these. <laughs> look at this antique, antique dresser. I wonder if there's anything valuable inside. Let's have a look. Hmm. Nothing. Just a bunch of clothes. Hey, Nick. Huh? Oh, sorry, I was just thinking. Oh, about Iris, I bet. Looks like you've been bitten by the love bug. Or I guess I can say the love bug bitten me once. The actual training area must be on the other side of this door. I wonder what it's like. Phooey, it's locked. Well, maybe if you tuck the bar off the thing, you know, maybe it wouldn't be locked. Come on, Nick. You know you want to open it for me. I can't. You've been in kind of a bad mood lately, haven't you, Nick? Zaveri! I know what it is. Iris. <laughs> Iris and Nick sitting in the tree. All right, Maya, you're just hurting me. You're just making it worse.
we'll just we'll just head back. We go over the bridge. Iris is on the other side with a fucking with a goddamn axe just cutting the bridge up. She makes Joe to distract herself from sadness. Me too. <laughs> When we managed to make it across Dusty Bridge. It's dusky. Nick, you look green. Are you feeling alright? Hey, what's wrong with you? Ever since we met Sister Iris at the training hall, you've been really quiet. Huh? Oh. Sorry. Hey you, wait up. You think he's yelling at us? He must be. There's no one else around here. Would you mind moving? You're standing right in my way. Get, leave. Leave now. Leave. Just go. I don't want to see you here. I don't need you here. Go. This motherfucker. <laughs> this motherfucker. He did not just... Hold up. He did not just, like, come up to the temple and went, My name is Lawrence. I swear. This guy. Whoa. Sorry, gotta run. See ya. Like, I gotta go, man. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Lawrence. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Leave. Liar. You're Larry. Your clothes may change, but you're still the butts. Shut up. I'm... I'm... I'm Lawrence. And I'm just here to do a sketch of Dusky Bridge. So, it really is our Larry. Not that I get why he's pretending to be someone else. Bro, I, I have, I have the like, I can just get up and leave. I don't even gotta talk to you. What the fuck are you doing here, Larry? So what are you doing with the last name, huh? Well, I, uh, I just... I want to start over again with a clean slate. Clean slate? You remember, don't you? Last night? The mask, the mask case? After that, I started to realize I didn't like this guy known as Larry Butts. And that's when I came across it. The Book of Destiny. The Book of Destiny? Do you mean... The Magic Bottle by Miss Elise. It's so beautiful, so moving, so gentle. My heart felt cleansed. I was saved. Maybe I should buy a copy of the Magic Bottle. <laughs> that's a, <laughs> that's what my <laughs> that's what my mom calls it when she's dealing with her depression. Son, can you hand me the Magic Bottle? Mommy needs a drink. <laughs> wow, Larry, would you make a? <laughs> oh, Larry. They would make a great book salesman. I really don't want to get that book. <laughs> God. I distracted myself with that stupid ass joke. Alright. She's the most wonderful person I have ever met. I'd follow her anywhere. Well, she certainly is a very elegant lady. You see, you see. Here's a photo I took of her in secret. Wow, that's a beautiful photo. Maya? Larry's hunting for your mom, dude. Shit. He's just out of here. He said, whoa, MILF alert. Gotta go for it. Gotta go fast. You wanna copy, don't you? It's okay, I just have to make extra prints. Not creepy in the slightest. Still, it's kinda hard to... Actually, you know what? I'm gonna, can I look at that again? I was wondering if I can see, like, a crest somewhere. Something to just, like, simply... By the way, hold up. You look at the background. Why are we in... Why is she at Castlevania? What's going on here? <laughs> She's at Dracula's Castle. Still, it's kind of hard to imagine you as a picture book illustrator. So, tell the truth. You must have some kind of ulterior motive, right? Oh, trust me. he's trying to- Maya, he's trying to fuck your mom. <laughs> what you missed so far? 
Well, we saw a leash and it led to awkward moments. We saw a picture of uh, Maya's mom, which makes me believe that Elise is Maya's mom. And now Larry's here. He's trying to slide in those DMs. What are you talking about? I don't... I don't trust anyone anymore. Especially not women. Talk about a bad case of denial. Anyways, can you even draw well enough to make a picture book? Art isn't only about technical skill, you know, it's also about having a pure heart. And that's why I'm asking, can you draw well enough to make a whole book? Hmm, now that you mention it, I wonder. It looks like you still have some doubts in your heart. It's true, I do. But when I first saw her, I felt it. Something inside me ended, and something else began. Oh, Larry, it sounds like you've fallen in love with... You're really supportive of this, Maya. I'm just saying. Listen, I'm just saying. That's your mom, dude. No, you're wrong. It's not her. It's the other girl. Oh, Larry, no. Larry, no, we don't want you to die next. Other girl? Oh, no. Got a fat, bad feeling about this. What if he's like, no, I'm talking about Bikini Man. You saw how thick and juicy she is? <laughs> Alright, Larry, I'll just... Actually, you know what? Is it this girl? Wait, how do I present again? Gotta click on it. Is this the girl you're talking about? Oh yeah, her! My little Iris! Oh, fucking hell. She's really pretty. This girl, she's perfect. She's exactly my type. I wonder if she, well, <laughs> if you mean she gets you into murder, <laughs> into murder crimes, then sure, yeah, she's exactly your type. Just like every other one. There's Steve, Ace Attorney Lore, that bikini is Larry's mom. Oh, what the fuck? Okay. Alright, well, I would love to find that out. <laughs> I wonder if she would model for me. I want to draw a portrait of her. Yeah, you always like those model types, don't you, Larry? Hey, wait a sec. Didn't you say you were swearing off woman? Huh? Yeah, that's right. Of course I have. I have, basically. But... But... But Iris is different. I feel like... I feel like I still have one chance left at the dream. This guy will never change. Everyone! Hey, Pearly! Dinner preparations are complete. Please come quickly to the main hall. Alright. Can't wait to dig in, Pearly. I'm gonna go to the inner temple and call Sister Iris. Also, I want to have, I had to have a moment of pause. I'm like, Pearl? No. <laughs> also wants to have a look where Mystic Maya is gonna be training. Hmm. Boy, am I stuffed. Are you sure it's all right to eat that much before your training? Well, it's kind of... It's, it's kind of training is a battle of endurance. Mystic Maya, please don't do anything that might put your health at risk. No pain, no gain, I guess. Hmm. I still worry about you. Well, well, well. Let's not dilly dally shilly shot. All right, all right, Tifa, calm down. Get your fucking Advent Children shit out of here. I don't want to see that shit ever again in my life. Dilly dally shilly shilly. Cloud's like what? She's like dilly dally shilly shilly. Like all right, Tifa, you're on some bullshit. <laughs> you must get ready for tonight. Good luck, Maya. All right, here I go. I'll see you all tomorrow, I guess. Iris, please ring the bell at 10 for lights out, all right? Yes, Sister Bikini. And then, after you ring the bell, I want you to take the poison and mix it up real good, you hear me? You can come join us in the training hall. I understand, Sister Bikini. Maya and Bikini really seem excited about this training thing tonight. Well, Pearl? What are you going to do tonight? Well, um... If you like, you can come to my room. 
Perhaps we can read some books together. Really? I'd love to. Uh, I'm not very good at reading. Don't worry. Don't worry, Pearl. I'm not good at reading either. I still try, though. Well then, would you like to practice reading with me? I'd love to. Pearl's absolutely smitten with Miss... I can't say her name. <laughs> so, Larry, what are you gonna do? Oh, me? Well... I'm just gonna hang out in my room. Can't stand the cold at all. I totally hear you there. Miss Elise? So, for example, how do you read this? It says... Gra what? Gravely. That's kind of a tough word. Oh, okay. And what about this word? That's another tough one. It says roast. What kind of book is she reading anyways? Well, are they reading a cookbook? Well, I'm gonna go wash the dishes and help clean up. I'll go visit you when I'm done, Miss Elise. Well, not much to do except head to my room and huddle under the covers, I guess. And cross my fingers and pray to God that a knife won't come into my back. Oh, it's night time. It's a whole different type of cold up here in the mountains. Why couldn't I look in the nearest bathroom? Just a little closer to my room. Mr. Wright? Yeah! Oh, it's you. I thought you were the other one. You gonna use the bathroom too? No, but have you seen Pearl? What do you mean, have you seen Pearl? Isn't that your job? No, not since after dinner. I thought she said she was gonna go to your room. I know, but she never showed up. I'm gonna go look for her. Excuse me. Miss Elise, a woman of mysterious and, and origin as her last name. But... The real mystery, mysterious one is Elise. Oh. I have no feelings for you. Sister Iris. Good evening. The real mysterious one is this girl. Are you on your way to the bathroom too, Mr. Wright? Can't let this chance pass me by. I should try to talk with her and maybe get some answers. I know I don't have a face cam, right? But like, for real? You should have just kept it on. You should just kept the hood on. I don't like seeing you. I have a stupid smile on my face right now. And I don't know why. Iris? Your sister Iris, right? Yes? Oh, don't you. Don't you fucking sweet talk me. So, when did you come to Hazakura Temple? I don't remember. Ever since I was a small child, the temple has been my home. Lion bitch. So you never left. Well, I don't have any family left to take care of me. Because you killed them all. Sister Bikini, I've come to think of her as my real mother, as it were. I see. But you didn't go to college? And maybe enrolled in the Ivy University Literature Department? No, I never had any interest in going to a big university like that. My training is all the education I need. I don't believe you! I still think she's pretty, no. <laughs> she is pretty! And that's the worst part. Why can't she be a good guy? But once in a while, when I get the chance, I make a trip to the nearby town. I can use a computer and a cell phone, too. It's not exactly something worth bragging about. But I don't see any psyche locks. You know what? You're right about that, Phoenix. Fuck, I forgot. Maybe she has amnesia? So I guess that means she's not lying. Please don't stare at me like that. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> you shut your mouth. What kind of place is this anyways? 
I hear it's for training to increase your spiritual power or something like that. It must seem awfully crazy to normal people like you. Well, I have to admit, it's a whole different world up here. I'm glad to hear you say that. Is it possible that... No, it can't be possible that she would have a sister. No... I have to rule that out. Because of the whole witness protection shit they did. You would think they would tie up any other loose ends. Mm. Talking with dead people... Who does it help anyways? I hate it. Really? So then why stay in a place like this? Huh. Something wrong? I didn't realize it was so late. I have to go and ring the bell for lights out. I guess it's almost ten now, huh? Um, Mr. Wright? Yes? If it's alright with you, I would like you to have this. I don't trust you. <laughs> I don't trust you, but I can't... I... I don't trust her, but I can't say no. This is your hood. It's been the power to protect... Wait, it has the power to protect you from evil spirits. Huh. What do you know that I don't know? Except for a lot of things. Is she... Hmm. Can she see the future? Does she know that something's gonna happen? Come to think of it, Sister Bikini was wearing one of those too. I pray for your safety on this dark, cold night. You're creeping me out, man. I'm sorry, but I must bid you good night. Wait a minute. Sister Iris. Yes? Just now, you called me by my name. You said Mr. Wright. How would you know my name? I never introduced myself to you. That's... Sister Iris. Please tell me the truth. You and I... Have we met before? I have no words for you! Oh, it's almost ten. Perhaps we can speak again. Tomorrow. I have no words for this. So my hunch was correct. She does know me. I have to try to talk with her again tomorrow. What are my theories? Ah, oh, shit. I don't... I don't know. I, I'll be honest. Not even lying. My heart actually hurts. I don't know why. It's a video game. Why do I care? But... Damn. Two theories. One is hell of a coincidence, and the other one is she might just have amnesia or some shit. Or maybe... <laughs> I really care a lot about the video game too much. <laughs> Me too. Like, I'm feeling it. And I don't know why I'm feeling it. But I am. But I guess... <sighs> Actually, three theories, I guess. One is that... One is that, well... One is that she's just a fucking liar, <laughs> right? The other one is she possibly has amnesia, or maybe, or maybe that just, it's a horrible coincidence, but, uh, fucking, she just looks alike, you know? And maybe she watches TV or something. Possible that she can see the future because all this spiritual power shit. Or the really crazy one is probably she um she came here 
to plot some sort of revenge, saw there was a temple here, said, I'll try and re I'll try and make myself reborn. And, you know, she just locks up the demon inside of her. <laughs> I don't know. Who's gonna die? Misty Faye's dead, isn't she? What the? That blood-curling scream came from the courtyard. Damn it! That scream, I'm sure it came from around here. Someone... Oh, God. Damn it. I just stepped on something soft. Hey, don't step on my tummy like that. Wait, what? What are you doing lying there on the snow? I passed out. What do you think? So the blood curling scream? Forget about that. Hurry and call the police. Is there any... Is there even a phone in the main hall? No? We still get reception up here in the mountains. You must have a cell phone on you, right? Uh, I didn't bring it with me. Oh, you're useless. I mean, even Iris has a cell phone. We got no choice. You have to go use the public phone by Dusky Bridge. Hurry. Run as fast as you can. Yes, ma'am. If you don't hurry, Iris will. Iris will. Iris will what? It's farther than I thought. The bridge is just up ahead. I have to tell Maya what happened, too. Oh, God, where's Maya? Oh, no! Dusky Bridge! It's burning down! Oh, she's trapped on the other side. What are you doing here? What the fuck are you doing here? Out of the way, loser. What is it? Is it me? Don't scream at me like that, Larry. I almost had a heart attack. My name isn't Larry, it's Lawrence. Oh, fuck you. Let me just answer the phone. I'm going to the inner temple. Don't be stupid. The bridge is nothing but a burning wreck right now. Listen to me. There's a murderer here. What? The murderer might have fled across the bridge. I have to make sure Maya's safe. But please, call the police. I gotta go. Get out of my way, Larry! It's too dangerous! Nick! I must have been crazy. I knew how dangerous it was, but I still went for it. Weakened even more by the fire, the rickety old bridge plank snapped and gave way. And as I was swallowed by the eternal darkness that surrounded me, a final terrified scream rose up to pierce the frozen air of that harrowing night. I'm gonna play as Edgeworth. I'm gonna play as Edgeworth. He was all smiles at the burning bridge. He's like, hey, Nick, how's it going? Like, get the fuck out the way. Am I in Germany? Who could, who could that be at this time of night? Beep. Yeah. Son of a bitch! <laughs> Edgy, get up! It's an emergency! Huh? Larry? Do you know what time it is? It's not Larry, it's Lawrence. And this is nothing more than a terrible nightmare. I'll just roll over and... Wait, don't hang up. It's an emergency. It's Nick. He... He took a real nasty slip. Well, if it wouldn't be the first time, so... I'm not joking, his life's in danger. What? What happened? Tell me. Talk about a guy with bad luck. He may already be dead. Anyways, you gotta come back. You're the only one who can help. My Iris. My beautiful Iris. She needs help. Alright. I don't know what's going on, but I'll be there as soon as I can. I'm at a destinate... I'm at the detention center. Please. It's been one year since I left that country. I thought I wouldn't have to see him again for a while. Edgeworth just wakes up, rolls over. He's like, I gotta go to work, babe. And then fucking Francesca's just in bed with him. 
I'm telling you, power couple. I don't care what you say. They're not related. <laughs> Sounds like it won't be pretty. And they, I mean, A, they're not related. And B, they haven't even had a childhood together, so it's fine. <laughs> Sound like it won't be pretty a pretty reunion, as if I accepted it, expected anything else. All right. Me and Edgeworth are the power couple. <laughs> Listen, if Edgeworth is there, he's a power couple. You're late, Edgy. What took you so long? I don't want to hear it. I chartered a private jet to come as quickly as I could. Well, you should have chartered a faster one. Anyway, just listen. Something happened to Miss Elise, and Nick is... my, uh, an Irish bikini. Huh? Say something, Edgy. Before I came here, I stopped by the hospital and paid a right of visit. I believe I have a better understanding of the situation than you at this point. The murder victim was the picture book author, Miss Elise. And she, she was found by Wright and had none. The suspect... Wait, what? She's bound by Wright and had none. The suspect is Temple's younger nun. Then later, while Wright, has crossed, while Wright was crossing the bridge, it broke and he fell into the river. The hospital says he'll need at least two days of bed rest. Yes, that's right. Hold up, but where's Pearl? What happened? Don't tell me she's locked up. But they arrested her. My sweet little Iris. And here I was, convinced he was the one the police had arrested. However, I still don't get I still don't understand what these two items are for. What are you talking about? There are things Wright gave to me when I was leaving his room. This? <laughs> He's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> he said some nonsense about being able to see people's hearts with this. I don't know. I, the guy's in the hospital. He's in bad shape. And the other... And the other, he couldn't possibly be asking what I think he could. He, even in the hospital, Phoenix still goes like, You see my badge? It's a good badge, right? Take care of it. I believe you. There's this trial starts tomorrow. With Nick out of the picture, you've all I got left. You're the one that can represent her. Excuse me? What did you say? You know, represent, defend. What are you expecting? Why do you think I called you anyways? I'm a prosecutor, Larry. A prosecutor. Do you understand what I'm saying? A prosecutor is a lawyer who... Don't talk to me like a kid. I graduated from junior high, you know. Don't worry about it. I promise I won't tell. But... What? I mean, I heard a paper badge and no pro... Wait, what? I heard a paper badge had no problem fooling the entire court before. Why did this country's jujitsu system have fallen to such decay? Please, Edgy. At least listen to her. Listen to Iris' side of the story. I'm defending her? You know what's weird about that? I believe she's actually innocent. God. So Wright has Wright wasn't joking when he gave me this badge after all. Thank you for coming. My name is Iris. Edgeworth, Miles Edgeworth. I don't know if I can be of any help, but Oh come on, Edgeworth, you can't remember your own client. Well at least hear what you have to say about the murder. Um, Mr. Wright, how is he? She really likes him. Oh God, she really likes him. You know, it's like, it was all an act. But no, I think she actually likes Nick. She's a changed woman. She has to be the same one, though. She has hidden... She she has inner demons. It has to be the case. Some type of spiritual shit is locking up... And her... Is locking her demons inside. That's why she has some weird infatuation with... With Wright. 
but she thanks his love, but it's her demon just going like, I'm gonna kill that bastard. Bring him over here. Mr. Lawrence said that he, that he might have died. Fortunately, he'll be fine. Larry, you moron, how could you say something like that? He was badly bruised when he hit the water, but otherwise, he isn't harmed. Thank goodness. But he caught some kind of nasty cold. A cold. He's running a high fever, and he's drifting in out of consciousness. He has a cold too. Memories are coming back. I must be imagining things. This woman. I feel like I met her before. <laughs> Is the team of the same or different from having an inner Pearl Platoon? See. It has to be different, because Pearl Platoon, in Pearl Platoon's case, there we go, in Pearl Platoon's case, she knows she's evil, and she's a little instigator, so behind all of it, she's like, do it, right? But in her case, she's probably doing it subconsciously. You know what happened? She was sleeping, she saw Nick. Her demon starts to flare up a little bit. She's like, it'll be fine. Then Pearl said, I'm gonna go wash the dishes. And while no one was looking, Pearl sneaked into her room while she was asleep. And she's like, do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> and her demon wakes up. She's like, I'll do it. I'll kill them all. <laughs> all right. Pardon. <laughs> Pardon, Miss Iris. I would like to ask you something, if you don't mind. I have the distinct feeling that you and, I've, you and I have met before. Must be your imagination, Mr. Edgeworth. After all, I hardly ever leave Hazakur, Hazakur Temple. Hazakura. Hmm. What's that? It's a place where those who wish to boost their spiritual powers come to train. You need to er undergo some... Oh, God. I lost my ability to read. <laughs> you need to undergo some very difficult training to... Release your inner spiritual power. Spiritual power? Did you go to that temple for that reason as well? No, I don't have any spiritual powers. I don't need them. In that case, what are you doing at the temple then? I've committed some sins. Sins that I need to pay for. And that's why I'm here. And why I continue to train to purify my soul. You do have inner demons! Oh, God! I want to ask you about last night, the night of the crime. Alright. I helped to... I helped to clean up... I'm overwhelmed. I helped to clean up after dinner, and then went back to my room. Around 8. Later, I left my room to ring the lights out. To ring the lights out at 10. Bell. We ring it at the time, we ring it at the same time each night. I see, and then, and then, I was told to go to the training hall, but, <laughs> I don't know, it was like this mysterious childish voice in my head that just says, do it, kill them all, get them. <laughs> Need to learn piano so you can play the song? Very airy, I love it. I was told to go to the training hall, but, I went back to my room and stayed there. Why didn't you go, why didn't you go to the training hall like you were asked to? I was frightened. And that's why she gave Nick the veil. She knew something was going to happen. Frightened. So I just stayed in my room and meditated until the murder happened. Oh, there's a fucking, god damn it, is that a mosquito in my room? Fucking hell. It's going to be a pain in the ass. More to her story, I just know there is. Maybe I can dig a little deeper. What were you so frightened about? You were asked to go to the training hall on the night of the murder. Yes. However, you didn't go. Because you say you were frightened. What exactly were you so frightened of? What the fuck is this? Hmm? Is there something wrong? I'm sorry, it's nothing. It looks like she's not aware of them herself. These must be what Wright was thinking, was talking about. Psylocke's. 
I believe he said that I needed to present this item to do something? What was that little smile at the end there? That was her inner demon. She's like, oh, I know you're sensing something. <laughs> Edgeworth is like, what the fuck? Do you have any idea as to what really occurred that night? And I think it was the result of the tremendous spiritual power that was unleashed. You have, you have an inner demon. Spiritual power. Yes, spiritual training has been a cause behind many great tragedies. This incident was just another example. Iris, I'm sorry, but I can't accept that. I'm a man of science. I don't believe in spiritual powers. Yeah. Listen, I'm a man of science. I don't believe in spiritual powers. These magical locks and chains all around. And you're like, I don't believe. I don't believe. I don't believe. Yes, I understand. Most people don't. Now, I'm certain that the thing that killed the victim was a human. So please, answer me the simple question. Were you the one who killed Elise? No. I'm not the one who took her life. Hmm. The psycholocks. <laughs> the psycholocks. <laughs> the psycholock things aren't appearing. I suppose it means I can't believe that she's not lying. <laughs> What's wrong? Can't believe what I'm thinking. And here I just finished saying that I don't believe in spiritual powers. <laughs> hmm? It appears. It appears that. <laughs> It appears that about all the time, all the, uh, that, that I can't read. I lost my ability. I'm flabbergasted. Too much emotions. I'm like fucking, what's his name? The guy who made the room. Can't remember his name right now. Too much emotions. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> it appears that, Tommy Wiseau, that's his name. That fucking loser. It appears that about all the time, all that you can tell me. Thank you very much for listening to my story. I visited right at the hospital before coming here. He asked me to take care of you. Me? Yes. At the trial tomorrow, he asked me to defend you. Mr. Wright has that much faith in you, Mr. Edgeworth? Then I will gladly entrust my fate to your, in your capable hands. But before that, I have one question. Yes? Do you know Wright? Uh, why would you ask that? Whenever you came up in our conversation, he would begin to act a little strange. Mr. Edgeworth, what is Mr. Wright to you? He's my lover, and you can't have him. He's a very dear and indispensable friend. It was five years ago. That's when I, that's when I deceived him. You deceived him? I heard that he was in a lot of pain afterwards because of what happened. I know what a weak person I am. That's why... That's why I thought it was best if I... If he never saw me again. I wanted him to just forget about me without learning the truth. Well, if you ask me, Wright is still suffering. And until he learns the truth, I don't think he will ever be able to truly recover. Iris, it's not too late. You should go to him. Tell him the truth. I'll defend you, but only if you agree to that one condition. All right. I promise. Very well. I'll do whatever in my power to get you an acquittal. She is the same person. <laughs> Happy Pride Month. <laughs> yeah. We all love Edgeworth. <laughs> That's enough information gathering for now. I should head to the crime scene. What am I holding on to? Hmm. Oh my god, Edgeworth gets his own fucking detective theme. What the fuck is this music? By the way, I have to. <laughs> By the way, I have to ask: Is the game too loud? Do I need to turn up the audio for the game? I mean, not too loud. My bad. Is it too quiet? Why'd I say that? 
Receive before the lights out bell. Protects from evil spirits. Uh, <laughs> the music's freaky as well. You think it's good? Alright. Then I'll keep it as is. I still have yet to figure out the uh, audio on this fucking capture card. But... It protects from evil spirits. She has a demon inside her. That's why that's why Nick didn't die. But it had to take its anger out on something. Huh. I was hoping there'd be like some words on here. Maybe maybe five years ago. It was her demon that was running rampant, you know? Maybe a tad loud? Alright, let me see. I'll put it down by like one decimal. Tell me if that's... Tell me if it's too quiet or not. In the meantime... Suspension bridge. Oh, look at this. This brings back memories. Sure is cold, all right. So, this is it. Dusky Bridge. Oh, wow, it's you, Mr. Edgeworth. Ah, Detective Gumshoe. Long time no see. It's been about a year, or has it been longer? It doesn't matter, Detective. What does matter is why you're shuffling around here. Oh, ouch. And there's that sharp left jab. Well, I'm happy to see you anyways, Mr. Edgeworth. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth? Why say it like that? Ugh. <laughs> Let me guess. You were transferred by HR to local precinct. A wise decision. A vast amount of nothing up here should be quite easy to guard. I hear you were back in the country and I arranged to come all the way up, out here. Everybody was real nice. They even let me take charge of the investigation, sir. <laughs> Got a keychain of him? Oh, really? Gumshoe always brings a smile. Gumshoe brings a smile to everyone's face. Especially when he's like, I guess I'm just gonna eat noodles tonight. And you're like, oh, that Gumshoe, <laughs> you poor son of a bitch. I'm supposed to report on the details of the crime scene, sir. Anyways, here I am, Detective Dick Gumshoe, reporting for duty. Great. Uh, thank you, Detective. I thought Prosecutor Godot was was gonna get here before me. That guy's a real mystery, I tell you. Prosecutor Gadot. Who the... Who the fuck is that? <laughs> He's like, who the hell? So who's this Prosecutor Gadot? I've never heard of him. Yeah, he's a new guy. Showed up after you left the country. He's a complete rookie, but nobody can say a bad word about the guy. What kind of a man is he? He just became a prosecutor recently. But he's good, sir. Like, real good. If he's so good, how is it that I've never heard of him? Is he the lead prosecutor on this case? You bet he is. After all, you know who is right in the middle of it. You know who. Phoenix Wright, of course. For some reason, Gadot has really got it in for Mr. Wright. Oh. Yeah, he seems to have some kind of grudge. And what would be the cause of this grudge? I don't know. Maybe he made fun of his mask or something. None of this is making any sense. I better look into this good dot myself. So, this is the bridge that Wright fell through. Yep. I can't imagine being that reckless myself. Look before you cross. That's how it goes, right? Or was it... Wait. And? Is there anything on the other side? Yep. Some old building they call the Inner Temple. But we can't get over there without a bridge, sir. Where is Maya and where is Pearl? Are they locked up? <laughs> Did she lock them up? Nobody lives there, so it's usually not a problem. But someone was at the Inner Temple doing some training and now they're stuck there. Yes, I heard that from right. It's Maya Faye. Oh no, her again? Anyways, the air is really turbulent right now. So we can't do an aerial extraction. No one's gonna be able to reach the inner temper. Temper. No one's gonna be able to reach the inner temper. Why? I'm having these flubs, you know. 
It's my ghetto dialect. My tongue just wants to make shortcuts. No one's gonna be able to reach the inner temple until tomorrow, sir. Well, she'll be all right in this... Will she be all right in this school? So how did this bridge burn down anyways? We're almost 100% sure it was lightning. Lightning? Oh, her, in her inner demon has fucking thunder powers too? She's like, remember the electrocution? Phoenix Wright just called down the lightning. Out here looking like Sasuke Uchiha, just like, I call this the thunderclap. <laughs> I just got back into the country, so I don't really know much about the case. It's simple. Well, simple as that simple does, as they say. Oh, have you got no idea how much I've missed that bit, that biting sarcasm you were sir? But seriously, this one, this one's a piece of cake. There's a witness that saw the whole thing. A witness? Yeah, that bikini lady. Bikini lady? Here? On this freezing mountain? Well, you should talk to her yourself if you want the details, sir. I may have to talk to this bikini lady. I mean, decisive witness myself. He said bikinis? Where? You're telling me the bridge caught on fire due to a fluke bolt of lightning. Yep. Last night it snowed for the first time in, thir in three days. It's a little unusual for lightning to occur during a snowfall like that. But according to the weather data, lightning definitely struck. <laughs> lightning power. <laughs> Maybe it was Propatine. Propatine's like, I'm here to help you, my apprentice. Unlimited power. Hmm, I see. This is very detailed weather report. Almost too detailed. It even has the exact time that the lightning struck the bridge. Oh, that? We got the information from the witness testimony. Someone actually saw the lightning hit the bridge? Who's this witness? Sorry. I'll go ask one of the lo local cops later. Who's the witness? Okay. I wonder, I wonder if, oh, there we go. I was like, I wonder if Edgeworth has different words. My friend since grade school fell from Dusky Bridge and is currently hospitalized. Homicide detective at a local precinct in charge of the investigation. My friend since grade school. I don't remember how we became friends though. <laughs> He's like, I don't know. Why does this motherfucker have my number? Alright, victim, a picture book author, unknown age, Larry's teacher. The defendant, a nun from Hazakura Temple. Doesn't seem to have any spiritual powers. Yeah, that fucking persona of her doesn't seem to have any spiritual powers, but the evil one? Unlimited power. Unlimited power. Prosecutor for this case, you apparently hold some sort of grudge against Ryan. Hmm. Off topic, but imagine Probatin was a new spokesperson for Nike. With this, you'll have unlimited power. Just do it. <laughs> Edgeworth's like, I don't know who the fuck Larry is, but he keeps saying we're friends. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Was this... I have to ask, was this the gateway into, like, Edgeworth getting his, like, two games? Where they were, they were like, you know what? People like playing as Edgeworth. Give, give him a couple of games. Yo, Edgy, what took you so long? I'm so cold, my brain's turned to Sherbert. I knew it was a mistake to race back to this country. What do you mean? Right is going to be fine, and the case itself isn't anything unusual. And I find myself taking a request to defend a woman accused of murder. Hey, wait a sec. Hold it. Objection. What's going on here, Mr. Edgeworth? It's uh, hard to explain. But one thing led to another, and... What kind of a lame excuse is that? And you call yourself a defense attorney. Prosecutor Edgeworth is a prosecutor. And that's why he's Prosecutor Edgeworth. Prosecutor Edgeworth, defense attorney. Doesn't sound plain. <laughs> Just sounds plain old weird. Right, Prosecutor Edgeworth? I'm not sure what role I'm supposed to be playing anymore. Dude, edgy. 
I don't see you for a couple of years and your heart turns to Sherbert? I say more like Shorbert. It's rather cold here. Iris didn't murder her. Someone else did. Her alter ego. <laughs> I just know it. Okay? So trust me on this one. Ever the romantic, aren't you, Larry? Never played Edgeworth Investigations, and it makes me sad. I have to act. It might be... It might be a spoiler, but I have to ask, is he a prosecutor in Edgeworth Investigations, or is he a defense attorney? Does this, like, change him? Does he go like, I like defending people. I I'm assuming he stays a prosecutor, right? Nevertheless, I'll do whatever I can to prove her innocence. At least until I pass the baton onto right, that is. Prosecutor? Okay. Hmm. All right, Larry. Tell me about Iris. Man, I'm telling you, isn't Iris so cute? Right, Edgy? You think so too, don't you? Yes, I do. What's wrong? Why are you so quiet? It's but it's simply your comment has me highly concerned. Could it be that the reason you think she's innocent? Come on, a girl that cute can't possibly be a murderer. I was right after all. I should never have come back. No, 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 don't worry. I see things for how they really are this time, honestly. If I had a penny for every time he said that. It's just that, well, Iris is a delicate flower. You can't force things too much, you know what I mean? I have no idea what you're talking about, Larry. Oh, uh, forget it. I didn't say anything. He's like, listen, I'm trying to swiggity swooty, but you can't grab at that booty. You know what I'm saying? You gotta wait for the booty to grab onto you. <laughs> Larry, where were you? Where were you and what were you doing at the night of the crime? Larry? What? Don't tell me. You think I've done it? What? Get lost. Go back to your charter jet and get out of my sight, you creep. And I hope your plane crashes and you die. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what the fuck? He said, I hope you die. I'll ask just one more time. On the night of the murder, where were you and what were you doing? He was taking pictures. He was taking pictures. He had to have been. As I suspected, Psycho Lux. I'm sorry, man. You know me. I just don't remember. Like, I don't remember, man. <laughs> My short-term memory is wrecked, dude. Pleasure talking to you, Larry. Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> Larry just ended their 15-year friendship. Uh, they sound cool. The gameplay is different, but it's still similar. Oh, really? I mean, hey, listen, I'm not saying much, but, uh, in two months, the great ace attorney's coming out, so I'm just saying, you know. There's a piece of paper back there. What's that about? I see that. I don't think that was there before. Hey, hello there. So, how you feeling? All right, I suppose. Huh? Who's this? My name is Miles Edgeworth. <laughs> my, my, a handsome boy such as yourself is always welcome. If, circumstan if circumstances weren't so tragic, I might just... Got a few months to make a switch appear out of thin air. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking about the switch, uh, fucking... Well, not really. I guess the Switch isn't really relevant in this, because I think it's also coming out for, like, PS4 and PS5, I think, maybe, or whatever. But Oculus Strip is getting a fucking remake, I guess. Uh, game was only in Japan. So, that's cool. Sorry to trouble you, but I'm looking for a woman in, in a bikini. <laughs> well, yeah, found her. Now that... <laughs> now what can I do for you? I'm sorry, but I don't see any bikinis. <laughs> If you ask nightly, I might give you a peek, big boy. God. 
that hits me because I usually do that. I usually go like, come over here, big boy. <laughs> um, Mr. Edgeworth? This is the head nun, Sister Bikini. She's the witness. <laughs> Say, how's it going, big boy? Come here. Strapping young lad. Why don't you say... Why didn't you tell me that earlier? This is exactly why your salary keeps on getting cut. <laughs> He's like, that's why your ass is broke. That's right. You know what? Now that I think about it, first time we're playing as a rich guy. <laughs> He's like, I chartered a private jet to get here. Fucking bitch. <laughs> My stomach's really already growling in protest. So... What's the latest about my beloved Iris? Well, first, I want to hear what you know. You just gotta tell me what you know, girl. One of the favorite dialogues because Esworth legit didn't know. <laughs> He's like, I'm looking for a woman in a bikini. And she's like, well, I can show you something if you want. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. First, I'd like to ask you about last night. Well, last night, you had an acolyte here for training. After dinner, the two of us went to the training hall in the inner temple. She must be talking about Maya. Approximately, what time was that? I suppose it was around 9 when we left here. Training lasts all night long. It's extremely exhausting. The channeling dojo head nun must be in attendance at the time to keep watch. Wait, the channeling dojo's head nun must be in attendance to keep watch? So is she not the head nun? A <laughs> jet all the way from Europe. Exactly. Oh god, all the way from Europe. So he's paying more money. Jesus. They said we were... <laughs> we take it in our Deutschland coins. <laughs> How much is that? Well, that's equivalent to... <laughs> One dollar is equivalent to ten in your country. Wow, you're right. That does sound exhausting. Detective, this is no time for flattery. Sorry. Sometime around 11, you witnessed the incident in the courtyard. But your duty was in the inner temple? Why'd you come back here? Hmm. The way you're staring at me, I'm starting to get goosebumps. <clears throat> I'm starting to get goosebumps myself, but for a decidedly different reason. Oh, you get the chills pretty easy, don't you, Mr. Edgeworth? Alright then. I'd like you to tell me exactly what you saw in the courtyard. It must have been past 11. Uh, no, I can't say it. So much for my poor heart. Hey, calm down, lady. Let's go. Let go of my time. You're joking me. Oh, no. No. I believed in you. <laughs> I uh, saw two people. One of them was lying on the ground. And the other one was stabbing her in the back with the sword. That's not a good look, man. Damn, that was a bad take. Twitter's gonna be mad. You're gonna lose some followers. <laughs> Did you see this criminal with your own eyes? I didn't want to believe what I was seeing, but it was Iris. Her hair turned red. The demon came out. <laughs> zero, zero to 100 real quick. You must have been quite shocked. Of course she was. Try putting yourself in her shoes. I'd be like, it'd be like if you were stabbing Mr. Wright smack in the middle of the courtroom. And I happened to witness it from the witness stand. I'd be pretty shocked too. Listen, Edward, I'd be pretty shocked, but, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you and me, we can go somewhere. I know it sounds insane, but that's what I saw. When I finally realized what I was seeing, I screamed, and then I passed out. Unfortunately for us, her testimony seems to be pretty solid. However, the idea of Iris doing such a foul act seems unnatural. Unnatural? The girl I know simply isn't capable of this sort of foulness. I wonder what she means by that. Yeah, I wonder what she means by that, because never in the history of ever did anyone ever go, My little Timmy can't possibly do that. I don't believe it. 
As the head nun, it's your duty to stay with the Acolyte at all times, correct? Yes, that's correct. I know I may look strong, but the truth is, I've got a bad lower back. A bad lower back? Yes. It's especially bad in the winter, so bad that I can't even lift a bucket. Do you remember how cold it was last night? My, ooh, my back, my achy breaky. <laughs> my, ba my bad back felt as stiff as frozen glass. I just wanted to take a nice hot bath to ease my aching back. My achy breaky. <laughs> That's why I returned to the main hall. I swear to God. I do that all the time whenever my back hurts. I just go, ooh, my achy breaky. <laughs> It's a habit I have. So, you left the you left the discipline discipline? You left the disciple all alone? Don't be ridiculous. I would never do that. I left her with Iris. That's why I ordered Iris to the inner temple after she rang the bell for lights out. Yes, but she never went to the inner temple, did she? So did this head nun actually see Iris there? I think I'd better try to get some more details. <laughs> Was this before or after Phoenix stamped on her accidentally? Uh, I think it was before, right? It had to be before, because when we got there, he's like, why the fuck are you on the ground? She's like, I passed out, motherfucker. <laughs> also, she was stabbed when we got there, so I assumed. <laughs> her name is Maya Fey. I treated her very badly, I'm ashamed to say. And after she went through the trouble of signing up for the special course, you treated her badly. I thought you were pretty nice. What happened? Special course. It's a training session where you sit on the block of ice and chant 30,000 times. You don't mean to tell me she's still doing that over at the inner temple, do you? No, 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 of course not. I don't have to worry about that little one. Last night, we still had, start, we still had to start the training session itself. Well, that's good to hear. Oh, dear. There's one thing I forgot to tell you. Uh-oh, I don't think I like the sound of this. Yeah, Pearl also disappeared. There's a child missing? Do you know that small girl? I believe she's Mystic Maya's little sister. Maya has a little sister. Oh, you mean the little Pearl. That's her cousin. Little Pearl? I thought she was gonna be visit- I thought she was going to visit Mystic Elise. After we finished them with dinner cleanup. But I haven't seen her at all since that night. She's nowhere to be found. You mean she's... She's with the victim? It's all the fault. It's all the fault of my stupid, creaky old back. My egg breaky. Uh, cause Bikini's supposed to be in the temple's... Wait, what? Bikini's supposed to be in the temple across the bridge, but came back. Yeah, she came... That's what she said. She said she came back. She didn't say... Why she came back? All she says is that she wanted to get into a bath, but I don't think that's why she said she came back. She really didn't give us a reason as to why she came back, except unless we're just thinking of she wanted to get in the bath. Um, and also, she she just sta she just stated that they didn't start the training yet. So why did she come back? The little girl who was with the victim on the night of the murder is gone. As they say, the plot thickens. Yeah, well, damn. Let's see. Can you tell me anything about this? Well, well, well. That's Demon Warding Hood. She has inner demons! Ah! <laughs> it's called a deeming. A demon warding hood. She it's a de she has a demon inside her. Acolytes are highly susceptible to possession by evil spirits, you know. Wait. Wait. Oh no. Oh no. No. Wait a minute. All right, hear me out. She says she has no spiritual powers of her own. In my, in my head, I'm like, uh, some weird split personality shit, right? But what if the whole entire time she was just possessed? And then, and then, she, I don't know, demon wanted freedom, escaped, and then said, you're useless to me because if they find me, we're dead. 
and then she just dropped her off on the mountain, and she's like, well, I'm here now. <laughs> I have no family. Oh, God, if I had a shot every time I said inner demons. She, come on, that ha come on. It has to be. She has the fucking nine-tailed fox in her. <laughs> I'm gonna destroy the leaf for the 50th time. What are you waiting for? You won't get any protection just by holding it, you know. Put it on already. No, I can't. I was just... The fuck you guys laughing for? It's like it was made just for you. Oh, he put it on. What do you mean by that, detective? It looks absolutely marvelous. You just have to keep it for a while. Is this some sort of divine retribution? Mm. Magazine. Oh. How could such a terrible thing have happened? It's all... It's all my fault. Well, come on, lady. I don't think you need to take it all... Quiet! <laughs> what do you know, anyways? Ouch, you're scary. With that stupid five o'clock shadow and that stupid old coat of yours. It's too bad that you weren't the one that disappeared. What the fuck just happened? Why does she have to take it all out on me? Her anger does seem a little... Ma manufactured. Is the demon inside her now? We're dealing with a demon. We're dealing with a demon. I'm about this here. Hmm. Well, let me see. Well, as you may know, in order to see reality for what it truly is, we start to break our attachments to... Wait, our attachment to much of the transcend... What the fuck? <laughs> you can call me a immaterial girl. Wow. All right, so I guess you got nothing for me. Uh, what can you tell me about Larry? This is Mystic Elise's apprentice, is it not? I think he might have a bit of a crush on me, sweet boy, at any rate. Oh, I don't blame him. Mrs. Bikini understands the temptations of young men. Sure. But I'm afraid it would be proper to abuse my position. I am head nun after all. But in return, I did allow him to draw a portrait of me. I pray it was a pose that maintained your modesty for everyone's sake. <laughs> oh shit! What the fuck? <laughs> oh, I would give anything to see Edgeworth in a hood. Me too. Alright. So you said you treat her badly. What happened? She's a very important visitor, you know. An honored acolyte. Honored? How so? The Fey name is synonymous with the Kyrian channeling technique. Therefore, she must be a spirit medium of great power indeed. Now that you mention it, one year ago, there was a case that was about the master of the Kyrian channeling test uh, technique. Detective! I detest talk of supernatural dribble. I suppose now you'll say she has <laughs> she has midichlorians. <laughs> she has these midichlorians, hmm. Oh. We can never... We can never escape Star Wars here. Ever. So it gives you the creeps, huh, Mr. Edgeworth? It has got nothing to do with it. And yes, I am scared of ghosts. Oh, this poor girl. Where could she have gone? Well, we checked out her home and she's not there. And she's nowhere in the vicinity of the temple either. Which means... There's only a few other possibilities as to where she could be. You don't think maybe she fell off the bridge and was carried downstream? Why do you have to be such a pessimist, detective? I can't help it, I only eat noodles. I was just trying to think like you. Ironic. I became a pessimist only after I had the pleasure of working with you. Oh shit. He's like, I want to be like you. I learned it from you, dad. I learned it from watching you. All right, I guess we'll head to the courtyard. Oh, that doesn't look good. The statue's like, yeah, I stabbed the guy. What about it? <laughs> and this is where the murder took place, sir. Other than removing the body, we left everything else untouched. 
Thanks, Detective. I'll just have to look around. It looks like the police are still investigating. Oh yeah, by the way. I thought I'd better ask just to be sure. Are you really going to defend that nun Iris at the trial tomorrow? Yes, I will. I gave her my word and now I must follow through with my commitment. Well, in that case, I've got to be careful. Got to make sure I don't leak the prosecution's whole investigation. Don't worry about it, detective. Just keep your mouth closed and I think most of it will flow out on its own. You got it, sir. <laughs> I'll make sure it flows out like water from the tap. Yes, you do that, detective. Just how much of your runny spell <laughs> How much of your runny spell leaked over the years? <laughs> He's like motherfucker. We need gumshoe protection agency right now. Exactly. Love that we get to hear Edgeworth's inner monologues. <laughs> He's like, you son of a bitch. Alright. Well let's get some information first. The victim. The victim is the famous picture book author, Miss Elise. Her entire past up until up until she won the writing award last year is a total mystery. It's hard to believe in this day and age you can still find people like that. The estimated time of death the victim was between 10 and 11 on February 7th. The cause of death was blood loss resulting in the stab to the back by the murder weapon. The murder weapon. The victim was famously skewered with a giant sword, sir. That's terrible. Yeah, but there's one strange thing. Yes? The victim's entire body was covered with bruises. Huh? The bruises are constant, are constant of falling from the height of two-story buildings. Huh. Huh. Two-story building. What the fuck? I'm really thinking here. It can't be possible that she fell off the bridge. I don't think... No. Where the fuck? That would be about the same height as the room in front of us, correct? Hey, you're right. Way to go, Mr. Edgeworth. Just happens to be the room that Elise is staying in. Maybe she's pushed out the window after she was stabbed by the sword. Fuck? That's a mystery. Now then, detective. Let's see if we can summarize what we've learned so far. Okay. Let's take a look at the map. According to the testimony of Sister Bikini, the head nun, right after they finished dinner, she and Maya head to the inner temple. At 10 p.m. after ringing for ringing the bell lights out, Iris went to the inner temple. When she got there, Bikini had had her take over while she went back to the temple. Okay, but she says she didn't go, unless her demon took over. After taking a hot bath to soothe her back, okay, so she did go for a bath. Sister Bikini witnessed the murder in the courtroom. Courtroom? Did I just say courtroom? The courtyard. If you want more details, you should ask Bikini herself. But... No, that's wrong. She said she... She said she saw... What the fuck? <laughs> Bikini said that she saw, um, why am I blanking on her name right now? Iris. That she saw Iris on her way back. She didn't say Iris came to her. So, I'm, I'm gonna 
I'm going to mix this up. She saw Iris on the way back, but Iris says she's going in her room. Is it, po- is it possible that through the curing channeling technique or some bullshit, some mystical oogie spooky bullshit, that I'm, I'm still under the impression that Elise is Misty Faye, that Misty was like, my baby's in danger. And then she had an altercation and they fought and she bodied her out the window and the demon said, be gone, foul being, and stabbed her. If you want more details, you should ask Bikini herself in the, in the main hall, the inner temple, huh? I'd like some more information about that place. The trial begins tomorrow, but who's the prosecutor? I'm pretty sure it's that Gadot guy, but nobody can get a hold of them, so they're looking for a replacement. I better not see Francesca there. I don't want to fight her. What do you mean? It's really weird. All of a sudden, no one can reach her. I wonder if the rumors are true. Maybe since Mr. Wright caught a cold and won't be... Or maybe he saw a picture of the victim and he's like, Whoa, I remember her. I intend to appear in court in the role of defense attorney. However, I would be quite unhappy if it came out that I'm actually a prosecutor. Yeah, I can see why. But I'm not the one you have to worry about. I think the real problem is going to be the judge. Yes, he certainly would remember my face even after such a long absence. That's why I requested that another judge preside over the trial tomorrow. Oh god. We've only met each other once. There's a good chance he won't remember me at all. We're gonna have- we're gonna have Beta Judge. Great. Yeah. But, what about the prosecutor? Everyone in the prosecutor's office m must know you. Would it be a problem if someone there made a big stink, sir? There's no need to worry. I pulled a few strings and arranged for a prosecutor of my own choosing. Wow, Mr. Edgeworth. I had no idea you had such a powerful string to pull. That seems kind of scummy. Said I got an inside man. So we're going up against Francesca. Great. What's this inner temple that Maya was supposed to be training at? According to Bikini, it's an old building they use for training the Alkalites. It's on the other side of the Dusky Bridge. The bridge that burnt down. You know what? God, I'm just thinking of the, the room that we went in, the training room. And you know how there's like the locked door and there's like the blue cave behind it or wherever fuck it looks like a cave. The blue cave or whatever behind it. If anyone's ever watched Lock and Key, <laughs> you know exactly what that looks like. And you're like, that's where the fucking demons are. The bridge that burned down, huh? Is there anything else on the other side of the bridge besides the inner temple? Nope, not a thing. Besides the demon realm. Nothing. The other side is surrounded by cliffs on all sides. In a way, it's kind of like a little, little island out there. Wait a minute. If that leads to the demon realm, then during, then during the incident with the diamond, they went to the spot. One of the demons left the cave, possessed little, little Hawthorn. And he's like, you're evil now. You want that diamond? We're gonna keep that diamond. In a way, it's kind of like a little island out there. So the only thing that's in the inner temple, I hear it's not the kind of place a person could survive in. Please be alright, Maya. Please don't be dead. Phoenix will be mad at me. Alright, let's look at this. Oh god, there's a lot here. So the sword from this golden statue is actually the murder weapon. I'm sure it's called a... I'm not gonna say it. I already tried multiple times. It's called a pointy sword. By the way, a nasty piece of work, sir. There's still blood on it, I suppose this is the victim's blood. Yep, it's all over the blade. And speaking of all over the blade, there are fingerprints all over the hilt of, of the sword, too. Fingerprints. Naturally, they match the prints of we got from the young nun, the defendant. Her fingerprints are on the murder weapon. What's wrong? You look really solemn. Is this how it's for right? Is this what it's like to be a defense attorney? God, I hate this. Yeah, I figure it doesn't really feel good. 
To be honest, it feels more like it's detrimental to your health. Alright, what about the staff? Is this what happens when main characters has money? He pulls strings in your favor? <laughs> Maybe. But he gets less experience for it. It's like a video game, right? It's like fucking... <laughs> it's like, here's your difficulty setting. You can either make it easier for yourself, but you get less experience, but you'll make a lot of money. <laughs> What's this? It looks like a wizard staff. Why is the amethyst gone? That belongs to the victim, Miss Elise. There's nothing strange or magical about it. Oh yeah, listen, this is just between us, okay, sir? Yes? What is it? This is top secret stuff. Don't tell anybody about this. Alright, there goes your leaky fucking mouth. The truth is, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a wizard. I am a level 70 wizard. Obey me. That's it? That's what you wanted to tell me? That's it! The staff was made from a very strong kind of wood. What about fingerprints? Are there anything on it? Just the victims. Where's the amethyst? Hmm. Can I look at the building? The main hall? The temple is above us here. Hey, you're right. But I'm pretty sure the main hall didn't have a second floor. This square temple was built on a steep part of the mountain. The front and back of the main hall are on different levels. Oh, that makes sense. But wouldn't it be easier just to build the piece slanted, sir? I failed to see how I could consider that to be even remotely a good idea. Hmm. Oh, I just love skiing. Really? You don't seem like the type. But what about sleds? Sleds? Nah. They're a little too kitty, you know? Messes with my hard-boiled image. Oh, but skiing's great. What's with the silence, Mr. Edgeworth? Is the world starting to go mad? <laughs> I'm losing my mind. It's a lantern. I suppose they light up in the night. There's something elegant about the light of the fire. At the end of each month, I always like to relax in my room by candlelight. Or you just can't pay the electric bill. Detective? Can you not afford to pay your electricity bill? How would you know? Oh, that man's fucking broke. The main gaze must be over the stone wall. Stone walls? I jumped over a few of those in my time. Most of them are good memories, but not all. Detective, perhaps someone should introduce you to the concept of... A I don't even know what the fuck that word is. Possin- Possindy? I don't even know what the fuck that word is. Holy shit. I really don't know what that word is. It's not like one of those words where you see it and you're like, I know this, but I can't say it. That one's that I just don't know. Mm, I guess that's everything here. I don't think there's anything. Show him the badge. Huh? Listen, the spirit of Phoenix is inside this badge. I'm going to show it to everyone I see. What's what's the thing doing? <laughs> what's that thing doing on your lapel? It's really that odd. You bet it is, sir. The prosecutor wearing a defense attorney's badge. It's like a detective with a license to kill. Does this little thing hold that of that on that anonymous of a meaning? Hmm. All right. I don't think there's anything I can really show you. Let's check this out. Body fell 10 feet after death. AFTER DEATH?! What? Wait. Hmm. Okay. Alright, well the only one... But I think we still have the question is Larry, right?
Hmm? I don't see Larry anywhere. Maybe we scared the poor kid away. His heart was his heart was shut tight with the number of psycho locks. <laughs> he just calls them psycho locks. I guess I'll have to look for him now. What a thorn in my side. To the bridge. Oh. Detention center, probably. Ah, Mr. Edgeworth. I came back because I need to ask you a few more questions, if you don't mind. But I've already told you everything that I... Iris, please remember. I'm on your side. You can tell me anything. Yes, thank you. Okay. Frightened. Take that! Take that! <laughs> wow. Never thought I'd hear that coming from Edgeworth. I was frightened. Since I've been han handling this case, it's my duty to dig up all the answers, understand? Yes, sir. The smallest flame can sometimes bathe the case in a whole new light. In my years in court, I've seen it happen over and over again. That's why I'm committed to searching until I have those answers. Now then, is it really true that you didn't go to the Inner Temple last night? Yes, I swear. I already told you that. Yes, you said you didn't go because you were frightened. That's right. If that's the case, then the obvious question is, what are you so afraid of? Iris, I wonder. Is this what frightened you so much that you couldn't even leave your room? Huh. Were you scared of Phoenix? <laughs> Answer his voice like you the first time. Was she either scared of Phoenix or the fact that she didn't have her hood to ward off the evil spirits? Perhaps this is what you're afraid of. Well, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Huh? Why is your voice trembling like that? It's just that your eyes, your eyes are scaring me. Oh, blast. I must be trying too hard to bluff. Please excuse me. I'm still not used to this role I've been assigned. No, I should apologize. I'm sorry for being such a scaredy cat. Anyways, I'm still determined to find the answers to this mystery. But I'm telling you, I really was in my room all that night. That's the case. And the obvious question is where you're from. I might not even have the evidence for it. She couldn't be scared of Phoenix. Hmm. You scared of lightning? You're not scared of lightning, are you? Okay. Alright, we'll be back for you. Maybe we can go find Larry. Oh, fuck. I totally forgot. Never mind. I remembered. Damn it. I'll see you later. Totally fucking forgot. Totally forgot about that little detail. That I just... I called it out and I just ignored it. Because I got sidetracked. Oh, damn it. It's out of my way. It's a piece of paper here. Uh, there are more... Inza? That's how you say that? There are more Inza cushions in the corner of the room. What's this one piece of paper sticking out from under the stack? Mm, beats me. Could you mind checking that for me, Detective? Yes, sir. Here you are! Hmm. Looks like an old... Manila... Uh, God. Gotta say the word. Manila envelope. What is it, Detective? This. This could be... An ultra-important clue, a super special clue. So we gotta put it in our notebook. Cause the blues clues, who's blues clues, you know what to do. I suppose I should read it myself then. Looks like a letter addressed to Sister Iris. Tonight at 10 at Heavenly Hall, unless you want your secret to be exposed. 
Ah, oh, shit. Sounds like a blackmail letter. Nice going, Mr. Edgeworth. Why can't I ever find clues like that? You're an ultra important prosecutor, super duper prosecutor. Well, I suppose it takes super duper kind of dumb to miss a clue like this. He's like, man, Gumshoe, you're just. You're on your Riri today. Hmm. To, sis, to Iris of Hanskura Temple. Citations! Here, yeah, there's something I must talk to you about. I've been waiting for you tonight at 10. Make sure you come unless you want your secret to be exposed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can't believe I totally forgot that thing even existed. My bad, I can't do that. To the main gate. Alright. Now back to the... What? Did I go there from the bridge? All right, here we are. I can just show it to her. Actually, you know what? Phoenix. Mr. Wright, I bet it's cold. Well, his fever is very high as a result. He's rather confused. He's worried about Maya, who's still trapped in the inner temple. And he's quite worried about you as well, it seems. Really? Yes. Naturally, once he recovers, Pass the baton, but I'll pass the baton back to him. No, don't. I'm sure that Mr. Wright wouldn't want that. He wouldn't want to defend me. Yeah. Not only from a moral standpoint, but also, if people found out your little secret... Oh man, he'd be under a lot of fucking pressure. Tell me about Maya. Oh, this is the woman who was undergoing training last night. She seems like a very strong, reliable woman. Are you jealous? <laughs> Whatever else anyone has to say about this Iris woman, I can't exactly say she's the best judge of character. <laughs> what about Pearl? This is the trainee's younger sister, correct? She's cute as a button, and she seems to really love mashed potatoes and gravy. Oh. She said, uh, she even said she was going to have the leftovers for dinner the next night. And then she took the leftover potatoes and the whole pot of gravy with her to her room. That's quite an appetite for such a little girl. Uh. Tell me about Larry. Oh, that Mr. Lawrence. He's a very sincere, hardworking person. He was even kind enough to draw a portrait of me. Knowing Larry, this woman exactly the type that he would fall in love with in first sight. Uh. Have you met Good Dot? Just making sure. Have you met Gumshoe? Mm -hmm. That's Mystic Elise. She's a picture book author, or so I heard. Does she come to Does she come to Harazuku Temple often? No, this was her first time. It's just that she was very important visitor. She was your blackmailer. Great. Is that so? Yes, Sister Bikini told me, be certain not to offend her. The victim, Miss Elise. The prosecutor office. Wait. The prosecutor's office still doesn't have much information about her, it seems. Hold up. Can I look at that again? Oh, Rob, why did I even do that? I want to look at this. Tonight at 10 at Heavenly Hall. Okay. What if this letter wasn't meant for... Hmm. Okay, hold up. Letter was meant for Iris. But what if Iris wasn't the one who got the letter? I would assume that Bikini would know her secret. Right? And it has to do... To me, it has to do with the way Iris spoke about it. She said, she said, Bikini told me not to anger her. That's it. She didn't say, I must not anger her. She's a very important guest to me. She's like, Bikini told me. Okay. 
So maybe she didn't get the letter. But Bikini got the letter and she said, I gotta protect her. Hmm. Interesting. All right, tell me, have you ever seen this letter before? This letter, it appears to be addressed to you. I think it's someone's idea of a joke, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I threw it away. Oh, so you did get the letter. Okay. She's not giving me a straight answer for some reason. I'm gonna have to find someone else who can give me more information about this. Oh, I'll, I'll be right back. You don't, don't you go anywhere. All right. Bikini? What the fuck is this? Do you know anything about this old crumbled up letter? Is that addressed to Iris? Gotta go somewhere early tomorrow, so we try to catch up on the stream for next time. That's all right. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Go get your sleep. Yep, it clearly says to Iris on it. I can't believe it. That girl doesn't have any secrets from me. So, Sister Bikini didn't know anything about it. Okay. So, maybe Blairy knows about it. Tell me about the staff. Ah, oh, shit. I was hoping she could be like, we're missing Amethyst. Hmm. Tell me about the sword. Since you're the only one here. Scroll, Misty Fay. All right. I gotta find someone to tell me more about this. Hmm. Gumshoe, do you know anything about the staff? Oh, so I think I might have already told you about this, but the truth is, all right, you want to be a wizard, all right? That's amazing. How'd you know? So, what do you think? A real great one, don't you? We just had this conversation a little while ago, Detective. Okay, I was hoping. This sword represents the multiple branches of life that can take... Wait, what? This sword represents the multiple branches that life can take. I read that so wrong. All ending at one. Hmm, I never heard that one. You know what I think about sometimes? What kind of life would I have if I had joined the Homicide Division? So you think about that kind of thing too, huh? Of course I do. I think about it a lot. Me as a traffic cop, me as a detention officer, me as the Blue Badger. I guess he doesn't have any plans to leave the force. Autopsy report. Occult. I think the only person I can really get any information out of right now. This man, his face betrays a life of suffering and wait what? His face betrays a life of suffering and great weariness of the world. Sure. But even so, I can't believe this guy actually jumped into the river. I think all that fun things he might have enjoyed if he had just lived. Relentless spirit training alone is not way to is no way to lead a complete life, huh? Sounds like she got some major regrets she's dealing with. Hmm, perhaps I should let Gumshoe explain the right situation to her. Hey, don't look at me like that. Do your own dirty work. Hmm. I asked her about Iris, right? You said you went with... You went with Maya to the training hall in her temple last night. Did you happen to see Iris when you were there? Of course I saw her. Told her to meet after the bell rings. The lights out. So you're saying Iris came to the inner temple then? Of course she did. Okay. Iris has always been a good, obedient girl. After that, I had Iris help Mystic Maya begin her training. But that doesn't fit with our story at all. She said she didn't go. She said that she never went to the inner temple. As they say, the plot thickens. Okay. 
talk to me. Why are you lying? Hmm. Alright, well, tell me about this. About this picture. Well, you look at that. I look pretty... S <laughs> I look pretty so to the exy. What? Oh, S to the X. Oh, God. I look pretty S to the exy. That's weird. Don't you think? Ah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Up until recently, I've avoided exposure in such magazines, but this time we had our reasons. Is that so, for example? Well, why deny the world the sight of such a lovely face? Uh, <laughs> well, um, look at what you found. That's the master of the curing channeling technique, Mystic Misty Fay. Fay. It's been nearly 20 years since Misty's disappeared. Apparently, she intended to pass on the master title to her daughter. Who is this daughter? Well, I myself part of the branch family so, of the Fay clan. But even I'm not privy to information concerning the main family. Taking a release. Hey, yeah. The photo ha- hold up. Yeah, the photo has the amethyst in it. I showed her the photo before, right? Oh, makes such a terrible thing have happened. Huh. Maybe if I showed the photo to Gumshoe. I'll show the photo to Gumshoe. Maybe he'll give me some information on it. There's a plot we don't know about this victim. We don't know her real name, her background. We don't know anything, really. That's rather odd. If she was trying to hide her identity, why would she become an author? I bet it was just one of those things, you know? She probably never expected to get so popular. She did say her friend published it for her. Hmm. Ah, shit. You got anything to say about the scroll? No. Yeah, Gumshoe just knows as much as me. Could you possibly be hiding? I'm just making sure that I don't see anything out of the ordinary here. I'm gonna head back to the. I'm gonna head back over here. Just have a quick glance with my eyeballs. Hmm. All right. And what about the bridge? I just want to take a quick look. I don't think there's anything here to really notice. Check the bridge out. Salmon. So, this is the bridge right tried the cross. Pretty reckless if you ask me. I'm amazed he survived the fall from here. Yep, he's one lucky guy, sir. Now I see how he manages to win his cases in court. Blind luck. I think dumb luck suits right just a bit better. There's a little shack down that way called Heavenly Hall. A shack? It's like a rundown doghouse for losers that can't bear the freezing draft of wind. Kinda reminds me of my apartment, sir. The name Heavenly Hall makes it sound like a palace. Give a hovel a great name is a crime itself. I'd call it false advertising. By the way, the name of the apartment complex is... is Compton Castles. <laughs> That's not such a great name if you ask me. Well, he said, welcome to Compton. <laughs> well, it's not such a great apartment either. The phone. Hey, it's a public phone. You don't see a lot of those anymore. That's true. Since we got one here, why don't we take a photo as a memento? Well, eh, sure, why not? Oh, darn it, I don't have a camera with me. I'm gonna go buy a disposable camera. 
I'll be right back, sir. What's so special about a public phone? Why is he so fascinated by them? Some letters are widely engraved into the rough cutting. Dusky Bridge apparently has an appropriate name. You need to get some glasses, Mr. Asworth. It says Dust Dusty Bridge. I can see how you read how you read it wrong, sir. You're the one who needs glasses, Detective. Try reading it one more time. Oh, you're right. It is Dusky Bridge after all. I guess whoever wrote this made a mistake. He made a mistake. Hmm. It looks like a pretty good distance to the far cliff. Yeah, it's gotta be around 100 yards or so. Detective, it's not even close to 100 yards. Well, I gotta admit, I'm not very good at judging distances. It's about 20 yards or so. It's impossible to cross without a bridge, it seems. Hmm. Nothing else around here, right? Huh. I guess I can... I guess I can try to get the information out of her now. Alright. Also, got a lot of info. Make sure we save. Okay. Let's see. <sighs> Talk to me. afraid of the blackmail. I found this in the main hall. It's addressed to you. Ah, oh, that's... Well, Iris? Why are you glaring at me like that? You were scared of the blackmailer who wrote this to you. Isn't that correct? <laughs> was, <laughs> was it the evidence or the power of my glare that broke the lock? Oh well, I don't suppose it matters either way. But Mr. Edgeworth, yes? I thought the letter was just someone playing a prank on me. A prank? Well, yes. After all, even if I did have a secret, there's no one to tell it to the... Wait, what? There's no one to tell it to that would cause me any grief. Hmm. I wonder about that. Sister Bikini is like a mother to me. I would never hide anything from her. No may not have anything to hide under normal circumstances. However, last night was different. Unfortunately, I don't know the exact nature of your secret yet. However, whatever it is, there's one person you didn't want your secret to be told to. Phoenix Wright. Huh? You mean something the... You mean something the right, it seems. And I can tell he holds a special place in your heart as well. That's why you didn't want him, of all people, to know your deep, dark secret. Well, what do you have to say? I should have expected as such, especially from a friend of his. Alright, spill it. What are you scared of? After dinner, this letter was waiting for me in my room. As I said, I was frightened by it. What is this heavenly hall the letter mentions? It's a small mountain shack at the base of Dusty Bridge. I call it Dusty. Dusky Bridge. A small shack? It's more like a broken down shack that no one would ever want to go near. Hmm. Where is it on the map? It's around here. To get there, you must follow a small path down from Dusky Bridge. The reality is to get to the inner temple. Wait, what? The reality is to get to the inner temple, I had no choice but to cross the bridge. But the thought of such a terrible criminal could be lurking at the Heavenly Hall. I was so scared by the whole affair that I didn't even want to think about it. So, this is the secret that you locked away in your heart. Yes. It looks as though I may have to visit Heavenly Hall now. Maybe I'll find some sign of our mystery, our mysterious blackmailer. 
In any case, you still claim to have never left your room last night. Yes, that's exactly right. Alright, testimony. The trial starts tomorrow. I promise you, I will win. I'm gonna win so that you and Phoenix can see each other again. But when... But when I do, you must promise me that you will tell him your secret. But it's pointless. Why would you say that? Because I may... Because I may know who Phoenix Wright is. But... He has no idea who I am. Alright. I just finished speaking with the head nun of Hotskara Temple. She testified very clearly as to what happened. She said she saw you stab Miss Elise with a sword. And one other thing. She said that when Maya Fey began her training at the temple, you were there as well? What? When I spoke with you, when I spoke with you last, you claimed that you never went to the temple. And yet, Sister Bikini says she met with you at the inner temple that very night. But I... I didn't go there. I didn't go to the inner temple last night. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, well I guess that's all for now. Guess I'll have to head over to that, uh, shack. To the fuck shack! Oh my god, it was a joke. That was stupid. <laughs> I was like, it's a mysterious shack on the side of the cliff. It's called the fuck shack. You walk there and it, you just see this and it's like, wow, okay. Whoa, not much of a view down here, huh? It's still better than the view from my apartment, though. Someone's here. Hide yourself, detective. Oh, why, why, why? Why does this always happen? Whenever I find a girl I like, they always run away. I even chase one of them to Japan. Next to going to be... <laughs> next, next is going to be prison, I guess. I'll steal that detective's wallet. That'll get me locked up for sure. Nah, I can't do that to someone who looks like he's down on his luck. He's just talking to himself. Shh, be quiet. I knew it. I shouldn't have done that. I blew it again. Done that? What did he do? I wonder. Hey, you! About what you just said. I've got an objection. What? <laughs> Edgy, you dirty rat. Come shoot, you oaf. I'm sorry, sir. Before I knew it, I was shouting out objection. In a loud, commanding voice, too. I even pointed with my pointer finger. You've watched too many trials. I'm sorry. Okay, Larry. Jigs up. <laughs> what have you got to say about yourself? Talk to me, Larry. What is this little shack, anyways? Well, I just discovered it myself yesterday. And, and why were you down here in the first place? Uh, come on, I'm an artist. I was looking for a good place to sketch. This is a great little place. It's uh, artistic. It's quiet, it's cold, it's got no power, and it looks like it's about to collapse. Sounds like a lot of... Sounds a lot like my apartment there. One thing's for sure, no one's likely to show up and disturb you here. So, can I get you something to drink? Some hot water, maybe? It's getting all buddy-buddy on us, sir. Listen to me, Edgy. You gotta do this. You gotta save Iris. Why are you so sure she's innocent? Because she's cute? Watch your mouth! Anyways, I made up my mind about it. I'm going to marry that girl. Um... Miss Edgeworth is pretending he didn't hear you, so I'm gonna ask for him. We already asked the girl to marry you. No, no, not yet. But I can tell how she feels just by the look in her eyes. She's got this, I really want that man to carry me over the, thre <laughs> over the threshold look. I'm sure Nick would be surprised. He never imagined that I could marry such a beautiful girl like that. Something tells me he would be shocked, indeed. 
That's why I didn't want her to do anything dangerous. I mean, what am I gonna do if she gets hurt? What is this guy trying to say? He lost me about a mile back. We really want to know the answer to that. We're gonna have to drag him into the witness stand. Come to think of it, you still haven't answered my question. Where were you and what were you doing last night? Oh man, don't you have anything else to talk about? That kind of attitude, you'll never make a late. You'll never be a ladies' man. Okay, chill out with those scary eyes. I got it. If you really want to know, last night, I saw something incredible. Something incredible. Alright, Larry, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, but let's not talk about that now. Let's talk about the good old days. What do you say? Come on, I'll pour you a nice cup of hot water. Why hasn't he realized that I'm absolutely despised talking about good old days, especially with him? Alright. Alright, Larry. Let's see. Can you tell me anything about the staff? That staff, Miss Elise was always carrying. Miss Elise? Why? Huh? When is it, Larry? There's something missing from the staff. There's something missing. I was hoping he would tell me, but that's okay. What if I show him the photo? I still can't believe it. She's such a great person. But someone's pinning this murder on my sweet little Iris. Angie, please. I'm counting on you. Well, frankly, I was hoping you'd give me a little more than that. Oh, uh, well then. I got it. I'll draw you a portrait. How about that? Since you're kind enough to offer, all right. Really? Edward's like, you know what? Yeah, I would like a portrait. Alright. Have you seen this, Larry? Ah, damn it. I thought maybe he'll look at him and be like, bro, that's the same girl. I'm just no good with people like her. She reminds me too much of my mother. May I speak now? Huh? Sure. I don't care how you feel about her personally. Just tell me what you know about her and how she's related to the case. Don't you think you're expecting a little too much of me? I'm just a 25-year-old jobless pum trying to be an apprentice artist. I'm actually straining to... I'm actually starting to feel jealousy of this guy. Just a little. Alright. Do you know anything about Pearl? Oh, hey, it's Pearl. But she's way cuter than this Pearl. I used to go... Wait, wait. <laughs> She's way cuter than this pearl I used to go out with, like, in a kid cute way. Yep, well, apparently she hasn't been seen the whole morning. What did you say? Edgy? Why are you wasting your time with me, then? What's wrong with you? Excuse me? If anything happens to her, I'll never forgive you. Wow, I guess he's right for the change, sir. Now I feel like I'm the bad guy in all this. Oh, it's Maya. Nick was trying to go save her, you know. But instead, he wound up falling off the bridge. I'm not surprised, though. Nick always gets himself into trouble. Well, if that isn't the... Isn't that the pot calling the kettle black? I just hope that Maya doesn't catch a cold, too. Or something worse. Hmm. Alright. Tell me what you're not telling me. of the crime. Alright, now you're gonna tell me what you really saw that night. Whoa, you're really upset, aren't you, Edgy? Okay, I'll talk. Huh? That was a bit too easy. Yeah, anyways, it was awesome. Never seen anything like it. At around 10 o'clock last night, it started thundering. I've been sleeping, I'm not sure for how long. Suddenly, zing! The world in front of me... What? The world in front of me went white. Like, I just been. <sighs> Sorry, that was a yawn. Like, I just been slapped in the face with my old <laughs> by my old girlfriend, Naomi. And then. And then, it was on fire. The bridge was on fire. Dusky bridge caught on fire? 
You saying you saw it with your own eyes? Yeah, why are you giving me an evil eye? I'm telling the truth. It's still three psycho lots remaining. That means he's still trying to hide something. By the way, Larry, where were you when you saw that happen? What, what do you say? What do you mean? What do you mean what I mean? <laughs> Just answer the question. I was in my own room, by the main hall. Where else would I be? As usual, you're as transparent as an empty jelly jar. The problem, I suspect, lies there. But there? What do you mean by there? It's impossible for you to have seen lightning strike Dusky Bridge from your room. Uh... Temple, main hall, bridge. It'd be blocked by a bunch of shit, right? So yeah, there you go. This is the map of the area. Look around. Take a look around the vicinity of Huskar Temple. What am I looking for? I think that should be fairly obvious. The main hall is surrounded by trees, and it's impossible to see the bridge from here. What? What did you tell? Why did you tell me that before? Well, how about it? How about what? Do you feel like talking now? About what? It looks like it won't be that easy after all. You leave me no choice. I have more on the... I'll have to move on to the next step. You weren't in your room at the temple, so then where were you? You don't know I wasn't in my room. So, where was Larry and why was he there? If I read the situation... Fuck! Where was Larry? I'm yawning. If I read the situation up to this point correctly, the answer is fairly obvious. Very well then. Let's touch my theory. No, wait, hold up. No, Larry. 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 You're not the one, you're not the blackmailer, are you, you piece of shit? Oh, you're an idiot. Blaze, you would. God, I keep yawning for some reason. Blaze, he witnesses from here. Oh my God, he sent the blackmail note saying, "I'll reveal your secret just to just to get her to walk over here to the fuck den." Oh God, Larry, what the fuck? The place you saw the lightning strike from was the Heavenly Hall. Why would I be hanging out in this old shack? It's freezing cold, there's no electricity, and it would fall apart at any minute. Larry, how'd you know that anyways? How did you know there was no electricity after all? It's not that dark yet. Oh. In other words, you just provided evidence to prove my theory. My theory that you at least once in your life visited Heavenly Heavenly Hall after sunset. I have to admit, I'm impressed, Hedgy. You're in a total different league from Nick. That's nice. Now tell me. What are you doing at the... At the what were you doing at this cold little shack last night? That's what you might call a fair decor. I think you mean a fair decor. I don't know how to pronounce that. Could it be you were waiting for someone? Oh no. You really are one scary guy, you know? I believe that last night you were waiting for this person to come meet you. You're the blackmailer, you piece of shit. Uh, there's only one person you wait for in a horrible place like this, Larry. I told you before, don't call me Larry. The person you were waiting for was Iris. Oh, suddenly I feel cold all over, Edgy. No doubt because of my chilling glare. So, you think I got the hots for Sister Iris, huh? Do you have some kind of evidence? You got something that proves I was waiting for her, or are you just guessing? This is where I draw the line and end the ridiculous little game. Here's the evidence that proves you're waiting for Iris. You're the blackmailer. Here's your evidence. You called her to the spot with a pathetic blackmail letter. Oh hey, give that back! You're embarrassing me. What are you doing with that anyways? It's not important. I misjudged you, Larry. What do you mean? Take advantage of a woman's frailty like that. You should be ashamed of yourself. 
Oh. First of all, <laughs> what's this at the top of the letter? It says salutation here. Well, that's that's what it said in the book. Letter writing for dummies. You're not supposed to actually write that. <laughs> that's where you're supposed to write Dear Iris. What? I'm sorry. Larry, you fucking moron. So, you were here in Heavenly Hall last night, weren't you, Larry? And you saw the lightning hit Dusky Bridge, didn't you? Sorry, Edgy. Sorry it doesn't cut it, scumbag, threatening a young lady like that. Wait, hold up. Wait now. What are you talking about? What threatening stuff? I told you. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You tried to scare Iris by threatening to expose her secret. What do you mean, threaten? When did I threaten her? Unless you want your secret to be exposed? That sure sounds like a threat to me, pal. Blackmail, in fact. Give me a break, it's a love letter. Haven't you ever been in love? What did you just say? My love for her burns so hotly, you melt all the snow on this mountain. Uh oh. But what is the secret you mentioned? Come on, Edgy. Don't you get it? I'm talking about the secret love between her and me. Obviously, she wouldn't want Old Lady Bikini to know about it, right? About our hot and sour, bittersweet love affair. Alright then. Why'd you send a love letter in a business like Manila Envelope? Give me a break. It's not my fault I didn't have any other envelopes. Yeesh. <laughs> then why are you so quick to apologize? It's because Edgy gave me that scary look. What's wrong, Edgy? Why are you why are you so quiet all of a sudden? That's it? That's what all those huge locks were about? <laughs> Fuck it. Edgy was just like, wait, the locks are gone. That was the big secret? What the fuck? What the fuck? What's going on? I quit! I don't understand why you're so defensive. Well, I don't know either. I guess the thing is, you should expect too much from a guy like me. Hey, come on, don't let it get you down. But Mr. Edgeworth, this guy's still holding something, I know it. What do you mean, detective? Don't forget what this guy said just a minute ago. If you really want to know, last night, I saw something incredible. Hmm, he's right. Larry! What? You're looking at me like a hungry dog that just found a bone. What was this something incredible you saw last night? You're gonna tell me, Larry, one way or the other. I have rather... T I already told you, didn't I? I saw lightning strike Dusky Bridge. Yes, and I believe it was the incredible sight you saw. But now that I think about it, something doesn't quite ring true. What doesn't? If that's all there is to your story, your heart wouldn't have had all those locks. Therefore, Larry, I do believe you saw something last night. Something more incredible than lightning. What? When? Where? Why? How? Hey, what do you think you're doing? If you hide anything from Mr. Edgeworth, I'll arrest you on the spot, pal. Oh, come on, Larry. What the fuck? No! What's wrong, sir? Does this mean I have to do that all over again? <laughs> I just love it. I just imagine Edward just on the ground like, How do you do it, Phoenix? Why are you glaring at me like I'm next to being hit by a bolt of lightning? He just, he just had it with this, with this Harlequin. If I really want to drag the truth out of him, I'll just have to drag him to the witness stand. He said, he's like, you know what, Phoenix? Fuck this. Fuck that. I'm doing it my way. <laughs> I just imagine Ed Edward just having like a full mental breakdown, just like, what the fuck? What the fuck is all this? February 9th, 
947, District Court Room Defendant Lobby Number One. Oh my, Mr. Lawrence feel Mr. Lawrence feels that way about me? Apparently, he isn't aware of your real secret at all. It's no time to be embarrassed. I'm sorry. I'm just hardly accustomed to that sort of thing. Worry not. In any case, whatever it was that he saw in the night of the incident, mark my words, I'll drag it out of him. Does that mean Mr. Lawrence is the witness today? No. I believe that none will be the first to take the stand. Sister Bikini. She claims to have seen the very, the very instance which you carried out the crime. I just wanted to ask you one last time. It really wasn't you who killed Miss Elise, correct? That is correct. It wasn't me. Very well then. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes? You were a prosecutor, weren't you? Are you sure about this? If your true identity is revealed... Don't worry. I've made the necessary arrangements. I see. Iris? It's the prosecutor's job to doubt people. But right now, I'm a defense attorney. A defense attorney's job is to believe in people, and to believe until the bitter end. And that's why my friend, that's what my friend told me once. Mr. Edgeworth, I simply ask that you watch and decide for yourself whether or not I'm fit to do the task that I've been entrusted. Very well, sir. I leave my defense in your capable hands. All right. Bring it on, bastards. Courtroom number seven, that's a big number. Court is now in session for the trial of Sister Iris of Hotskar Temple. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The defense does indeed appear to be ready. However, the same cannot be said for the prosecution in this case. Indeed, I'm not sure I like such a blatant waste of court's time. An empty prosecutor's chair can only mean that the prosecutor has no cons confidence in their ability to prove their case. It would seem this case is already over before it had a chance to begin. I'm ready to announce my verdict at this time. The court finds the defendant. Ow! You bitch! The prosecution stands ready. And you are? Francesca Von Karma, prosecuting progeny. Von Karma, you say? Huh. Pretty chance you weren't. Pretty chance you wouldn't be of any. Any relations to the legendary prosecutor Man Manfred? Uh, Manfred Von Karma. Legends are a thing of the past. I am Von Karma. That is all. Upon a special request, I flew in today for the purpose. For pur pur purpose. Why is that? For the purpose of prosecuting this case. You did. Then you must be quite a big shot. By the way, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. I'm almost certain that I've seen you somewhere before. Or am I just imagining things? You look very much like a prosecutor I once met. And I believe you are imagining things, Your Honor. Miss Von Karma, do you have anything to say? There's no such weakling as this man among those of the prosecutor's office. Oh, I can tell that she's dealing with some feelings right now. She's like, this son of a bitch. <laughs> There. There isn't? But I'm sure once before... I told you. There's no such weakling. <laughs> what is that? Is that a whip? I'm not sure I cared for such a thing in my courtroom. Bailiff, remove the whip. I have no objections to the whip. You don't? The prosecution can wield a whip or drink 17 cups of coffee. <laughs> That's very specific. But there's still one truth. That is what I st that's what I stand here to prove today. This promised to be interesting, Mr. Edgeworth. I had expected to face Phoenix right here today. But look at you now. Maybe this is what I've been waiting for all this time. Miles Edgeworth, I will not allow this chance to cr to crush you. What? 
I'll not let the chance to crush you slip between my fingers. I see you brought your flair for the histor- for the histor- what? Historonic? Allow me to add to the things I'm not sure about. People acting bizarrely in my court. The stage is set. Now continue with the proceedings, Your Honor. Very well, Miss Von Karma. Please give an outline of this case. With, the, with as little whipping as possible, please. The murder victim is the famed picture book author, Miss Elise. God, that's brutal. Her body was found in the Hudskara Temple Courtyard. She had been stabbed through the torso by, ceremo by a ceremonial sword from a golden statue. The sword in this picture is the weapon in question, correct? Very well. The court accepts this photo of the crime scene. There's no mistake. This was doing of Sister Iris. After all, there's a witness to her, to her crime. Very well. Please bring us this witness. And so it begins. My first and last trial as a defense attorney. <laughs> She's so short. Wow. Witness, state your name and occupation, please. Hold on here. I'm not sure about not being... I'm not sure about being not sure if I care for all the- wait, what? I'm not sure about being not sure. Witness, please stand up nice and straight. <laughs> She's still too short. What the fuck? If I recall correctly, there's a few milk crates in the defendant's lobby for our back pain- for our black- uh, go on. Bailiff, fetch the crate for the poor lady. There she goes. Once again, your name and occupation, please. Little old me? Well, I'm the head nun of Husker Temple on Eagle Mountain. My name's Bikini. You got it? Bikini. God, her face just jiggles. <laughs> so weird. Nice to meet you. But you don't appear to be wearing a bikini right now. Ah! The courtroom is a garden of holy judgment. Those with lechery, those with lechery in their hearts should leave this sanctuary at once. To make, you want me to leave? No need to get your bikinis in the twist. Let me tell you, I'm a sight to behold in summer. In any case, witness, I hear that you saw the crime take place on the night in question. That's right. I can still hardly believe it myself, to be honest. There's no way dear little Iris would do such a thing. Let us hear what you have to say, then. First, tell us about your movements that night. That night I was helping an acolyte with her training in the inner temple, but... Well, as you can see, my bag likes to act up violently. So, I left Iris to help the acolyte and return to the Hosker temple. There's no bath in the inner temple, you see and I needed a long, hot soak. It was after I had finished just... just I was... wait, what? It was after I had finished, just as I was heading back, that's when I saw it. Hmm. So, it was simply a coincidence that you found yourself returning to Hanzagura Temple. Yes, you could say that. If my ache break it back had been in such pain, I would have stayed at the inner temple. That sounds like a pretty important statement she just made. There's one- there's only one problem with the testimony that I can see. And you're not about to fall at the first hurdle, now are you, Mr. Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth, please begin your cross-examination. Fucking Francesca out here, calling me out. She's like, can you- can you do the defense, Mr. Defense Attorney? Can you wheedle out this little problem and discrepancy here? All right. Do 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 do. Go to Lee's testimony. Testimony was in a room until the murder was discovered. Okay. The night I was helping the alkalite, you see my back likes to act up violently. So I left to help the Acolyte return to the temple. There's no bath at the inner temple. I need a long hot soak. 
no bath at the Inner Temple. I was... After I finished, I just head back, and that's when I saw it. Can you clarify what it was for me, ma'am? The crime took place in the courtyard, correct? When you go from my room to the main hall, you have to take a winding... You have to take a winding hallway from which you can see the courtyard. That's right. In other words, it was pure coincidence that the witness saw the crime taking place before her eyes. There was no compli... There was no complicated setup in this case. This certainly seems to be true. Hmm. There's indeed one thing wrong with it. Just how good is this witness memory and observation skills? Alright. I'm not like training. So I left Iris to help the Acolyte. You left Iris to help. With what? What do you think? The Acolyte's training, of course. It was just past 10 p.m., so we were starting to enter into the training exercise properly. Wasn't it your place to remain there with the Disciple? Well, the job is simply to watch over the Acolyte so they won't... so they don't pass away. Just to confirm this point again, that night, you met Iris in the Inner Temple, correct? Yes. She's a gentle, honest girl. She never once failed to follow my directions. Alright, well... Okay. Well, that goes directly against her testimony. Witness ha witness have to undergo their own trials, I'm afraid. The defendant's fate rests on their powers of observation and memory, after all. Well, well, well. Don't worry. I'm more than up to the task. I'm a woman of faith, after all. The head honcho of Hotsukura Temple. In that case, Miss Honcho, I'd like you to explain something for me. The discrepancy between your testimony and that of your defendant's iris. She claims that after ringing the lights out bell, she went back and stayed in her room. Which means, she did not go to the inner temple at all. She said that. A defendant or a witness? Who's more likely to lie, do you suppose? The defendant is simply lying to cover her back. But that is completely illogical. The murder was, was committed in the courtyard of Hotsukura Temple. Claiming that she went to the Inner Temple would make for a much better alibi. But that's odd. Whatever the reason, I can't believe that she would lie. Mm. She does indeed have honest eyes. <laughs> yes, because she never lied before a day in her life. All people lie. That is my belief. Why am I the only one being whipped in here? Because you can't whip Edgeworth. Edgeworth, is Edgeworth has a force field around him of sexiness at all time. He can't be damaged. <laughs> Anyways, neither the witness nor the defendant has any reason to lie, which means we must call your memory into question. Dear, dear. You're older than me, and yet you want to play that game, do you? Well, that isn't exactly what I... My memory's perfect, crystal clear, especially in winter. Then, I suppose, it's too early to end this cross-examination, eh? Mr. Edgeworth, if you were going to question... If you're going to question the memory of the witness... Alright, let's see what we got here. You'll need to show m me more decisive piece of evidence. Understood, Your Honor. I was naive to think that alone... I was naive to think that alone would do the trick. And please add your... Your comments a boot. A boot? <laughs> Please leave your comments about Iris to the testimony. <laughs> Does he have an accent? An Irish accent? A boot? And let us return to the cross-examination. That night, I was hoping to act light with her training in the Inner Temple. Well, as you see, my bag likes to act up. Iris came to the Inner Temple, and she was dressed exactly as she had been at dinner. There's no bath in the temple, so I need a long and hot soak. She was dressed exactly as she had been at dinner. Why are you lying? 
Tell me why you're always lying. <laughs> Witness, let's get one thing straight. The defense whom you claim to have met, she was wearing this demon warding hood, correct? Of course. That's a very important piece of clothing. I'll have you know. Wait a minute. Objection! Hold it right there. Why do you have that? <laughs> Why do I have it? That question of the day, now is it, Miss Von Karma? I'll have you know that this hood was given to someone as a gift that night. Before the light bell... Before the lights bell was rang. What? You know where I'm going with this, don't you? If the witness had seen the defendant, as she claims... Then the iris she saw should have been missing this very hood. It's not a bad feeling at all, exposing contradictions like this. Now I understand that, <laughs> now I understand that happy look on Wright's face every time he does it. Order. Order in the courtroom. Sister. This hood. You have spare ones around the temple, don't you? Spares? Well... I don't tend to make too many of them. I see. A stockpile with surplus of hoods, then. Each nun is only given one hood. This should be the only hood that Iris owns. Then this is quite strange. If there was a surplus of hoods, then she could have worn one of those. There's no contradiction here. I'm sorry to break this to you, Miss Von Karma, but you won't get away that easily. Discrepancies such as this will sow seeds in any human's heart. The seeds of doubt. Witness? While I don't wish to call your testimony into doubt, you must give every detail with, preci with precision. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm comfortable going along with this. Sister, you shall continue with your testimony. Tell us what you saw after finishing your bath on your way back to the inner temple. The seeds of doubts are sprouting in the judge's heart. They just need a little more stimulation to bear fruit. Contradictory stimulation. Get that good stimulation going, you know, get all handsy in there. I finished my bath around 11, and I thought I should return to the inner temple. And as I walk, and I was walking back, I heard a noise from the courtyard. I took a look and... Iris was... Oh, Mystic Elise. And with the sword of all things. Mystic Elise was staying in the court in the corner room, which fa which faces onto the courtyard. The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of her window. You saw a truly terrible sight, didn't you? If I was in your place, then it would be much like Miss Von Karma whipping Mr. Edgeworth in the courtroom. And me sitting it all from this very chair. Well, something like that. This judge. His imagination is about as vivid and creative as gumshoes. I would like the fool. <laughs> I would look. <clears throat> I would look the fool if I committed on such a foolish, such a foolishness. Anyways, this case is mine, Miles Edgeworth. Calling everyone by their full name. Can't you do something about that habit of yours? All right, I just hit my fucking microphone. That was amazing. That was great. All right, let's see what we can weed out. I finished my bath around 11, and I thought I should return to the inner temple. I was walking bad. I heard noises from the courtyard. I took a look. Iris was hitting her with the sword. Mystic Elise was staying in the corner room, which faces onto the courtyard. The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she pushed her out the window. Hmm. What makes you so sure of all things? It's just like I told you earlier. I heard a noise from the courtyard, okay? Thump! Just like that. You're one smart sister, I'll give you that. The autopsy report states that the victim's body was covered in bruises, indicating a fall from around 10 feet in height. Hmm. It appears that the witness was not mistaken, then. Yep, yep. I'm more than just a pretty face, especially in winter. 
I'm a woman of faith. After all, the head honcho of Hasgurta. There's only two of them working there. What's wrong, Miles Edgeworth? No snippy comeback remarks? It doesn't feel like she's lying. It's very powerful testimony, too. She claims to have seen the instant in which the defendant was stabbed. My bad, not when the defendant was stabbed, when the victim was stabbed. There are only two things I can believe right now. My client, Iris, and my own abilities to def as a defense attorney. Hmm. Finish my bath around 11. Tell me more about this noise that you heard. That you heard. You say you heard a noise? Thump. Just like that. That can only be the sound of a victim falling. It's very quiet in the temple, you know? So you only heard thump, but you didn't hear glass shattering at all. You can even hear the snow falling from the branches. Thump. Just like that. But then, couldn't the noise you heard have been the snow falling to the ground? I never thought of that. Wow. <laughs> he starts laughing too. Ugh! The next one to laugh gets a whipping. Well, whatever the source of the sound. I looked over at the courtyard and... Alright. Go into a little bit more detail. This is the second time that the witness has testified to seeing the defendant. But, some doubts remain in these claims. Hey, just what does that mean? Just because you're a good-looking young man doesn't give you the right to... The murderer who stabbed the victim with the sword. Sister Bikini, try to recall exactly who it was you saw as clearly as you can. Hmm, well... You're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. Oh, now that you mention it. There was something awfully strange about her. Something that hasn't been has been bugging me for all this time. Was her hair red? Please don't keep us in suspense. Her hood. Her hood. That's right. It's coming back to me. Iris, she wasn't wearing her hood. I thought something was out of place, but it all makes sense now, doesn't it? After all, she giving that hood away to someone, right? Son of a bitch, I walked straight into a trap. <laughs> you dug your own grave, Miles Edgeworth. What did you say, Miles Edgeworth? Is this testimony important? Mm. It is important, Your Honor. This may initially appear to put me at a disadvantage, but I can't see any other leads at this moment. Your Honor, I would like these new statements to be added to the testimony. Miles Edgeworth. If you want to hang yourself, you need only ask. I'll glad you lend you, <laughs> lend you my whip. She said, I got the rope right here. <laughs> Witness, add that statement to your testimony. No problem. Now that you mention it, Iris didn't have her hood. Tell me more about that. Are you sure about that? Yes. After all, we always wear the same clothes. I don't mean because we're poor, you understand me? It's our style. Yes, that's it. That's absolutely no need to explain yourself. Anyways, she looked different from normal, so it really stuck out. Like me holding a whippet Wait, what? A whippet puppy instead of my whip? At least then it might bite you, not someone else. Iris didn't have her hood on, I'm sure of it. Very well. Now, please tell us about... Please tell us about the victim. <laughs> oh, it's a wee little laddie. Tell us about the victim. Alright. Staying in the corner room. Faces. Okay. Tell me more about the room. The room the victim was staying in overlooked the courtyard, correct? Which means the victim's room was on the second floor. No, Hatsukura Temple is a single-story building. But the mountain itself slopes downward. Which elevates the main gate side of the temple and the guest rooms in the back. To about the height of a two-story building. I see. And the victim was staying in one of these elevated rooms, correct? Yes. I should know. I'm the one who carried her things to the room, after all. It occurred after she was pushed out the window. 
try to get as much information as possible. Iris didn't have her hood on. Iris was you know, walking back, heard noises, we pressed that. Finished my bath around 11 and I thought I would return to the inner temple. About f uh, how far is it to your room? How far is uh, how far is it from your room to the inner temple? Let me think a moment. About 20 minutes on these stumps of mine. It's about 15 to Dusky Bridge from Hotskara Temple. The inner temple is just beyond the bridge. Still, you never made it back to it that night, did you? That's right. I was heading along the walkway towards the towards the main hall. Okay, so nothing there for me. All right. Let's see. Now that you mention it, Iris didn't have her hood on. Hmm. Let's check that evidence, shall we? She didn't have her hood on. Temple surrounding area, weather report. Hmm. Trying to see if there was... If there's like anything different here. I don't think I can get anything from there. Photo of Elise, taken by a pupil. Till the murder was discovered. Loss of blood, stabbed in the back, body fell 10 feet after death. Courtroom. Hmm. Anything? Wait a minute. Yeah, no, this is, that's totally, what? That doesn't make any sense. I never really had a good look at the photo until now. Oh, come on! You tell me that doesn't count. <laughs> Don't get smart with me. Get smart with this pen. <laughs> Don't get smart with me. Get smart with a penalty. <laughs> Iris was Mystic Elise. And then the sword of all things. Now that you mention it, I just didn't have her hood on. Do I have like a clear picture of the statue, by the way? Elise has her hood on. Well, that's just a picture. I mean, in this picture, you can obviously see that the statue has the sword in its hand, so I, I... I don't know how that wouldn't work. Hmm. Am I outsmarting the game? <laughs> I'm thinking about it too much. Alright. Murder weapon, victim's blood, fingerprints. Received four lights out. Protect the evil spirits, found in the main hall. Shows the surrounding area. An occult magazine featuring Husker Temple. Hmm. Get so mad when I outsmart the game, because then I start focusing on that. All right, Mystic Elise was staying in the corner of oh, yes. Stabbing must have occurred after she was pushed out the window. Would this not work? Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Subtle bitch. Huh. Staying in the corner room. Then she mentioned it, didn't have her hood on. Let me check real quick. Defending none from Oscar Temple doesn't seem to have any spiritual powers. My mentor, his daughter, born and raised in Germany, prosecutor at 13. Went to the inner temple. <laughs> Love Edgeward's objections. Mm. Finish bath around 11. Huh. Heard a noise from the courtyard, and I looked. And with the sword of all things, now that you mention it, Iris didn't have her hood on. 
Mystic Elise was standing in the corner. Standing, my bad. Was staying in the corner of the room, which faces onto the courtyard. Stabbing must have occurred after she was pushed out of the window. I need. I need something. Okay. I'm not gonna get nothing from there right now. Uh. Snow 7. Uh. 7 to approximately length. Uh, lightning. 10 to 11. Lightning struck at 10. 10 around 30 minutes past between the fire starting. Okay. What's in the autopsy again? Time of death 10 11. Cause lost blood from the stab and bag. Body fell 10 feet after death. Oh, what the fuck? The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she went. Thank you. <laughs> I like. Here's the thing. In my mind, I'm just, I'm just like, but this one though. This one shows that she was stabbed. <laughs> I'm looking at, I'm looking at the physical evidence that literally shows that, but she's being stabbed here <laughs> instead of the autopsy. I'm looking at the picture and not the words, as they say, pictures are a thousand words. Anyways, impressive logic. That's what I like to say. Anyways. Oh, please do. My brain's something else, especially in winter. However, I think you're overlooking one thing. Miss Von Karma, would you be so kind to take another look at the autopsy report? The autopsy report? The victim did fall from a height of 10 feet. However, this fall was after she was killed. Huh. That's right. It says after death right here. The scene the witness claims to have seen is contradictory. If the defendant stabbed and killed the victim there in the courtyard, how did the victim then go to take a 10-foot fall? Order. Order in my court. The victim was killed and then fell. If that is the case, then the victim must have been killed in her room. Don't you agree? That is a logical conclusion. Yes, that's right. The victim must have been stabbed by the defendant in her room. And she was then thrown out of the window, down into the courtyard below. <laughs> Were there any signs of struggle in, in Elise's room? She was stabbed with a sword that would leave a blood stain. wouldn't you agree? Well, Miss Von Karma, was there any blood? Now that I think about it, she did say, she said, I heard the body fall, but she still didn't hear any, like, windows or walls crashing, right? So if there's nothing there, <laughs> something must have happened. No traces of blood were found in the victim's room. Your whip just, your whip has just caused traces of blood to be found in my glorious payoff beard. However, is it, ow, I'm sure there's no need for me to go over this as I'm sure your honor is well aware, of when a stab wound, <laughs> when a stab wound produces the most blood, when it produces the most blood, when it's pulled out, very little blood is actually lost at the moment of the blade's insertion. If you want to talk about when the most blood would be lost from the body, that would be when the blade is removed. Indeed, with the weapon still, with the weapon still in its place, it acts like a lid on a wound. That's true. The weapon's still in the body. There wouldn't be much blood. <laughs> Judge is hella weird. <laughs> he is. A perfectly reasonable line of thinking. <laughs> we have come to a conclusion then. The victim was thrown out of the window with the sword still in place. This removes all of the contradictions. Order. I must admit that this is probable vision of events. I'd expect no less from Francesca von Karma. She locates and takes control of every vital point. Take that out of context as you will. Hmm. I see. That we need we need a clear testimony from the witness. Remove all suspicions of your part and tell us only the facts. 
Witness, please. Remain standing on the crate. Don't go selling me short now. My AK break -ay. The weight of winter snow has bent me out of shape. Especially my back and my mood. Sister, please give us your testimony. I will give you a vigorous massage once we finish here. With the whip? Oh boy. Alright, alright. When I looked across at the scene, the sword was already in place. Damn, that sword went all the way through. Ugh. So bad. <laughs> Thinking about it now, I didn't, I didn't exactly see her stab Mystic Elise. I never seen so much blood before. That's when I fainted. Can't blame me, can you? And when I awoke, Mystic... What? And when I woke, Mystic Ami was stabbing Mystic Elise through the back. How the fuck would you step through this? <laughs> Bro, that went clean through. That's like super violent. <laughs> this all confirms Miss, Miss Karma's theory. On Karma strive for nothing but perfection. Putting together such facts is nothing for me. You should know that, Miles Edgeworth. Perfection is an impossibility, Francesca Von Karma. And I'm here to teach you just that. The edge. <laughs> the edge is out of fun. Uh, surprisingly, there's one M rated attorney game. Really? Ooh. That's interesting. And in that game, they just swear the whole entire time. They're like, fuck! You fucking killed her, dude! She's dead! When I look across at the scene, the sword had already been in place. Thinking about it now, I didn't actually see her stab. I'd never seen so much blood before. That's when I fainted. You can't, you can't blame me, can you? When I woke, Mystic Ami was stabbing her through the back. Alright. Think about him. Didn't actually see it, so why the if you didn't see it, then why the fuck are you on the stand? Get out of here. They go crazy as fuck with the blood. We don't remember much more than that. So is it kind of like like the zero the zero escape franchise with the 999, the first game? It's like, yeah, we put bombs inside of them, and then this dude explodes. And then the next games they're like, oh, they'll die by lethal injection instead. <laughs> like what? It's like, what happened to all the blood? I'm blowing up like it's saw. I don't want to play a game. <laughs> Think carefully. This is very important. It's Iris we're talking about here. I'm thinking... I'm thinking for all I'm worth. No, when I look over, the sword was already in Mystic Elise's body. Hmm. It might not be conclusive, but... The testimony supports her theory. The victim was stabbed in her room and then dropped into the courtyard. I think it proves that, I think it proves eh. I think this proves rather well, Mr. Uh, Miles Ellsworth. Yeah, basically. I've never seen so much blood before. That's when I fin it. When I woke Mystic Ami was stabbing her. Who the fuck is Ami? <laughs> By Mystic Ami, are you referring to the Colin statue? <laughs> I imagine Edward would be like, who the fuck is Ami? Just stabbing someone with the shit. God. With the shi With the shi chi 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 The sacred treasure. With the chi chi sword. <laughs> Goku, get back here. Swinging a blade. But to, but then make Mystic Ami hold the blade. Truly a, a heinous, despicable crime. It's easy, to spite, it's easy to despise something. Anyone can do it. However, there's something that cannot be done so easily. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's deadly hard for you. Anyways, what's the problem? Exactly why would the killer set up this grotesque scene? Can anyone explain this reason behind this? No, I don't think I can. Edward's just <laughs> out of the loop with the Fey drama. Exactly.
there is an always logical reason behind why someone acts. That's true, so true. In early spring, for example, I often find myself. There isn't always. That probably might come in handy someday. There are too many unnatural elements in this case. Why was it necessary to use the sword from the Ami statue as a weapon? Why was the weapon ultimately placed back in the hand of the statue? If I can expose the flaws in the testimony, perhaps then I'll begin to find the truth. Alright. Take a look at the same sword already been placed. At the time, was the victim bleeding? Well, I was very shocked to see... Very shocked, um... Yeah. I was very shocked to be seeing all this, of course. So, I'm not entirely sure. But I don't think I saw any blood. Not then. Then why the fuck did you pass out? What? I'm sure that you didn't. The weapon was acting as, as a plunge in the wound. In any case, let's be clear on one very important thing. Did you actually see the instant in which the victim was stabbed? What? Never saw so much blood before. But you didn't see- what? So, you're saying that you saw the victim's blood. That's right. Some of it had splattered onto Iris, too. When the Fenda was arrested, she was- she was meditating in her room. And her blood-feckled clothing was neatly folded, folded in the corner. What? Her clothes were blood-fleckled? That seems quite conclusive to me. What should I do? I'll press on it. Going back to your previous statement. You said that you saw little bleeding when the victim was stabbed. But now, you say you saw the victim bleeding. Well, I say that what I... I say that what I saw is what I saw. What'd you see? Maybe I didn't see the poor woman get stabbed. But I saw the girl pull the sword out of her plain as day. Pulling the sword out? Well, it wasn't exactly pulling. It was more like, came out? The fuck does that mean? You'll add this statement to your testimony. Oh. Was that important? More important than you can imagine. More like came out. Like by itself? So the instant in which the blade plunged, plunged, plunged into the hilt, smoothly drawn out. What? Smoothly, you say. You're saying you saw the sword smoothly slide out. That's right. The whole thing happened right next to the golden statue. Mystic Elise was on the ground and Iris was stooped over her. The sword was buried up to the hilt. When Iris stood up, the sword in her hands just slid out of Mystic Elise's body. It slid out from the gaping wound. It goes without saying that if the sword was removed, there would be bleeding. Nothing out of place here. Is that really the case? I can't be helped feeling that something about this testimony is very out of place. That something which couldn't possibly have happened. Hmm. Oops. There we go. Which the blade plunged how smoothly drew out. Murder weapon has blood stains on it. Hmm. Loss of blood from oh god. She died from loss of blood, so she was still alive with the sword in her? What? I'm not... 
fucking excuse me? Yeah, I don't think that I didn't think that would do anything, but still. What's the blade plunged into the hilt? Has the victim's blood and suspect's fingerprints on it. There's teacher. And friends though. Yeah, I don't think any of this would actually help me right there. You said it was into the hilt, right? Wouldn't the blood be deeper, though? Objection! Sister Bikini, you are a reliable witness. At least, I like to think so, but there's too many contradictions here. What do you mean? If she said that the sword was, like, all the way in like that, there would be more blood on it, right? But you're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. What contradictions are you talking about? In the scene that the witness claims to have seen, the weapon was thrusted up to the hilt into the victim. Furthermore, the killer withdrew the weapon smoothly from the body. However, both of these are complete, completely impossible. What do you mean? Please explain yourself. Explain yourself! <laughs> what the fuck was that about? If you start, uh, to start with, do you think it would be possible to stab someone to the hilt with this? It's really jagged and, like, their body would be all fucked up. <laughs> no matter how it looks to the defendant, she doesn't appear strong enough to do that. Doesn't appear? What <laughs> meaningless dribble. I, too, may appear to be weak and frail. To fucking who? But I can crush men under my heel and make them weep. I, too, have... <laughs> Me, the one who constantly assaults every man I see. <laughs> I, too, appear very weak and frail. No, you don't. Liar. The objection stands. I well... I, I wept a little back there, I must admit. This isn't the only issue here. If this sword was truly stabbed into the body up to the hilt, well, just look at the branches on it. It certainly wouldn't come out smoothly. That, too. Yeah. You have to, like, fucking move it around like taking a knife out of a, like, piece of wood. That's... Also, if you if you got her cleanly through, think about all the ribs you're going through. Oh, God! She went a bad way! <laughs> you also have the problem of the amount of bleeding. It's true that when the blade is left in the body, it acts as a plug of sorts. However... When the weapon is shaped like this, it's an entirely different story. The wound would be too large for the bleeding to completely for the blade to completely stop the bleeding. It's nothing more than conjecture. In reality, the victim was stabbed with the sword. Even a weapon of this nature it may still sometimes slide out smoothly and may still sometimes stop the blood loss. I'm not finished. There's still one more conclusive contradiction. You got more? This one's simple. If the sword really was thrust all the way to the hilt, why is there only blood on the tip of it? If this witness is telling the truth, then there should be blood along the entire length of the sword. Bravo, Miles Edgeworth. Raising this many contradictions from a single piece of evidence. All the other attorneys I know could maybe manage one if that. What does this all mean? You have proven contradictions regarding the murder weapon, but... Having come this far, there's only, only can be one answer. And that is... The weapon used to kill the victim was not the sword. What? A foolish fool... A, f a foolishly foolish idea born from the foolish mind of a foolhardy foolish fool. Let's examine this again. God, that's a, that's a lot to say. 
Let's examine this again. What was it? What was it that made us think the sword was the murder weapon? Well, it's because Mystic Ami was holding it. Exactly. However, oh, okay. So, okay. So she wasn't. She wasn't dead <laughs> when she got stabbed. I mean, she wasn't alive when she got stabbed with the sword. That's good, because that's a bad way to go. <laughs> so more like stabbed in the back with a knife. Needed to drag the body out, kicked it through a window, or something. Switched out the murder weapon. If you reflect on this, that is the only... Hmm. Sorry. If you reflected on this, that is the only bias of which we assume such a thing. The impression left by the scene was just too strong that it was influenced by us. It influenced us to believe that the sword was the murder weapon. Order. So maybe the sword was not the murder weapon. Even if that's the case, it changes nothing, Miles Edgeworth. The sister here saw everything. She saw the defendant stab the victim with the sword-like object. Mm, that is true. Your response, Mr. Edgeworth? My response is fuck you. <laughs> that's... that's so. I would like the prosecution to answer the obvious question it raises. The obvious question? Yes. Namely. Where did the real murder weapon disappear to? It goes without saying that the police searched the main hall in the surrounding area. Perhaps the prosecution can enlighten us as to... as to if a sword-like object was found. Hmm. She couldn't possibly be stabbed with her own staff, right? I highly doubt that. Answer the question, Miss Von Karma. No evidence... No evidence that was found. Right. Hmm. Another mystery to throw into the pile. A trial without a murder weapon is a tricky beast. Excuse me. Could I say something? I just remembered something, actually. What is it, sister? I was just thinking, it's possible. That just maybe what actually happened was... It was just over there. What exactly are you going on about? Murder weapon, I mean. Maybe... I think I might know where the sword was disposed of. What? Well then... I think we need to hear testimony from you one more time, sister. Impossible. What else? What else could this old woman have seen? Alright. Can I have a quick, like... I saw the murder at around 11... Can I have a quick... Okay, never mind. <laughs> I had to look at something else. I'm like, hmm. I'm noticing, like, the orb on her fucking... Like, as like a crest there. I had to just look at the other stuff. Make sure that's not... That's not like the amethyst where this was at. Anyways. I saw the murder at around 11 p.m. And after asking that... After asking that it be reported, I went out to the main gate. And there I saw tracks, tracks that indicated the snowmobile had been used. It takes 15 minutes to walk to Dusk Bridge, but less than five using one of those. Maybe they threw the weapon into the Eagle River and came back while I was knocked out. Iris could have, <clears throat> Iris could have done that. She could have drive the snowmobile after all. Hmm. Witness. Please tell us everything you know right away next time. Well, I'm not in the best of shape, but with my ache and break and my age, you know? There were indeed snowmobile tracks in front of the main hall. My bad. Main hall. Main gate. Here's a photograph. A snowmobile, eh? I see. Well, it's certainly an interesting theory. Alright, well, it's an interesting theory, but looking at it right now, there seems to be an only one-way fucking track to the hall. Doesn't seem like they left. The tracks begin in front of Husker Temple, and run all the way to Dusky Bridge.
That solves your pesky little problem, yes? The Eagle River current is... Well... Hmm. The Eagle River current is quite swift, meaning that it doesn't freeze over in the water. Making it the perfect place to dispose of a murder weapon. Did she really go to the river to dispose of the murder weapon? I can understand if she used the snowmobile and was there for a while and then came back, because, like, maybe the snow would cover, like, the other tracks. But to say she did it within five minutes, the snow wouldn't... You gotta be... It gotta be snowing really bad for that to happen. It only looks like it was a one-way thing. Mr. Edgeworth, your cross-examination, please. Okay. And after asking to be reported, I went to the main gate, and there I saw a track track that indicated the snowmobile had been used. It used about 15 minutes to walk the dusky bridge, but less than 5 minutes to use one of those. Maybe they threw the weapon on the Eagle River when I uh, and came back while I was knocked out. Iris could have done that, she can drive a snowmobile after all. Maybe I can just, maybe I can just use, maybe I can just use this piece of evidence right there to, you know, contradict that, right? Objection. Fuck! <laughs> didn't even have to, didn't even have to fucking try it. I admit this photo proves something. It proves that the snowmobile was used the night of the murder. You finally accepted the <laughs> inevitable, it seems, Miles Edgeworth. However, if that's what the witness says is true, then why is there only one set of tracks? Because it was, it was for all the times that you carried me, Edgeworth. What do you mean? Wow, you got wow, guys, your fucking evidence just fell apart within like seconds. You're like, yeah, take a look at this picture. I said, hmm. Okay. <laughs> and Iris left Hotskura Temple, threw the weapon into the river, and then returned. If this was the case, then naturally there should be two sets of tracks in the snow. Those from heading out the bridge, and those from coming back. Hmm. Huh. What do you not tell me, Bikini? Did Bikini use the snowmobile to make her way, to take her and Maya to the place, right? Left it in front of the bridge. They were gone. Then she said, my back hurt. And then... She's like, I can't walk back. Fuck that. Take the snowmobile. Burn. Leave it right there. Huh. You're right. Hmm. You were... Wait, what? Hold up. When was dinner done? Dinner was... Okay, hold up. Dinner was finished around 9, right? Then... At 10, they're supposed to ring the bells. When the fuck did she say she came back? Ring lights out by 10. In a room until the murder was discovered. Through 10, 11 p.m. A whole ass hour. If she were to walk back... That would be like 20 minutes later. Hmm. Whatever. You're forgetting one thing, Miles Edgeworth. Hmm? On the night of the murder, it was snowing. The tracks led to the bridge were raised by the snowfall. See, that's what I would say, but it wasn't snowing that hard. Also, didn't they say the snow ended at... Uh, where's the weather report? Snowed approximately 10.50, lightning at 11. Hmm. From 7 to 10. And the time of murder was when? Time of death, I bet. Time 10 through 11 caused lost blood. Huh. I don't... I'm not sure if that time adds up. This removes your precious contradictions, now doesn't it? I see. While she was at the river, the snow stopped, leaving just the return tracks in the snow. But she said she finished her bath around... 
around what 1045 so it was still snowing at that point in time right what do you have to say to that edgeworth is there a flaw in her theory the idea that the snowfall covered one set of tracks there's a contradiction in that tracks of the river were covered by snow what a nice theory however miss von karma that's impossible Would you care to explain why there's a rude index finger <laughs> currently pointed in my <laughs> in my general direction? She's like, put that fucking finger down. No need. The evidence will do all the talking for me. On the night of the murder, the killer went to and returned from Dusky Bridge. In order to dispose of the murder weapon, the outgoing tracks were erased by snow. Or so claims Miss Von Karma. Mr. Edgeworth, present your evidence to the contrary. Contradictory. Evidence that the outgoing tracks were not covered by snow. Let's go to a temple map. Can I check this real quick? Alright. Don't think that'll help me at all. Yeah, that would that would happen before the murder, right? Well, they did say it's in like an hour. Hmm. Lights ring out at 10. I'll just use the weather report. Yeah, I highly did. Witness, please tell us again what time it was when we witnessed the crime. Like I said, it was around 11. Of course. This means that the weapon was thrown away after that time, correct? On that note, please take a look at this data. Is it the weather report from Eagle Mountain on the night of the murder? Why did I say it like it was a question? <laughs> the weather report? Snow started to fall around 7 p.m., but it stopped at around 10.50. Therefore, when the sister witnesses the crime at 11, the snow had already stopped falling. It's impossible for any tracks made after that time to have been covered up. Order. Order, I say. Very well, then. It looks like Miss Von Karma claims have been snowed in. Ah! It's not too soon to be closing this trial due to snow. Miles Edgeworth, how pathetic of you to rely on weather of all things. I relied on science. Go fuck yourself. Answer me this, then. When is a weather report ever correct? Really, we're doing this? No, no, you you got it all wrong. This isn't a forecast, this is actual data. Ah! Oh, forecast data, all weather reports have some inaccuracies. It may have, it may have still been snowing in the vicinity well past, well past 11, 11 p.m. Why am I having a hard time talking? If it was still snowing, then how come the body was clean? Hmm. It's true. We cannot be totally sure. What? How did she pull that off? It stopped snowing at Hosgur Temple when the murder took place. We need to prove conclusive evidence. Ah, oh, fucking bitch. Just take a, take a look at the fucking crime scene! Come this far, there's no turning back now. Very well. I, too, am going to say the N-word. <laughs> I cannot allow any doubt to remain... To remain... <laughs> I cannot allow any doubt to remain concerning this testimony. Ah. Can't back down, can you? Such perfectionist, Miles Edgeworth. Very well, then. Miles Edgeworth. Where's your evidence that it already stopped snowing when the victim showed up? Or the victim was killed, you know, you know what I mean. Look at this photograph. Oh wait, when the victim was killed. I mean, still, still, like, I mean, look, it's still that would that would work, right? Ultimately, it all comes down to one point. That being, whether or not it was snowing in the courtyard when the victim was stabbed. That's right. But proving that is incredibly easy. What? If we want to know whether it was snowing or not, this photo will tell us everything. Of course, 
I'm referring to the photo of the crime scene. As you can see, everything is covered with snow. With just one exception. And that is... The victim herself, Miss Elise. Why is there no snow on top of her? The answer is simple. It had stopped snowing when she was killed that day. In other words, if the killer really did go to the Eagle River to dispose of the murder weapon, then in this photograph there should be two sets of tracks. Oh shit. Just what are you? Just what are you suggesting, Miles? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure myself, but this is simply what all the facts point to. That night, someone used a snowmobile to leave Hosgrove Temple. Yes. From the tracks left, it can be understood that they were heading for Dusky Bridge. At that time, it was still snowing. Like I said, yes. Of course it was, because those tracks were erased by the snow. Then, when the person returned to the temple, the snow had stopped. Thus, thus the return tracks remained. Hmm. Can I say something? No, you can't. Stop. 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 Because now you're a murderer. This all sounds a bit fishy to me. What does, sister? There's only one key for the snowmobile. Hmm? Furthermore, on the night in question, we know that the defendant had it. The key was found in a room after the murder. Like you can't place evidence. Which can only mean that night. Iris used the snowmobile to go to the inner temple. But Iris said that she never went there. I should probably press on the point some more with when I get a chance. The snowmobile, the snowmobile can't cross the suspension bridge, so she must have left it on the Husker side of the bridge and crossed on foot. She didn't go to the fucking... Son of a bitch. <laughs> that sounds right. But that's odd. When I left Iris and returned to Husker Temple, I didn't see anything near Dusky Bridge. Guess I've just failed to see it, sister. Maybe, but when I made it back to the temple, it was there by the main gate. Snowmobile, I mean. And it was covered in snow. Ah, shit. You know what I saw? It was covered in snow, too. Is it, what the fuck is wrong with you people? What does this all mean? I don't know. So then, what was the snowmobile used for? It wasn't taken by the defendant who she, uh, eh. It wasn't taken by the defendant when she went to the inner temple. It had, if it had been, then the witness could have possibly have seen it at the gate. Furthermore, it wasn't used by the killer to dispose of the murder weapon. If that was the case, there should be two sets of tracks. I can't... I can't think of Elise going somewhere to do anything. Really? And would Larry use it? That makes no... That makes no sense to me. I can understand Larry using it to, like, head to the shack, because he was there, right? How the fuck? Hmm. But then who would have used it to bring it back? All we know is this. After it stopped snowing, someone used the snowmobile to return to the temple. It might have been Larry. Hmm. I never thought a simple snowmobile could cause so much trouble. No, it couldn't have been Larry, right? Because he was at the bridge when Phoenix got there.
What the fuck? Never thought a simple snowmobile can cause so much trouble. I think we've learned all we can from this witness. Yes, yes, I have nothing more to add. I told you everything, everything I know. But then, that still leaves us with the same problem. If only there was someone, a witness who can testify to having seen the snowball. If only! A witness, huh? Pearl, where the hell are you? Was there no one out walking, perhaps near Dusky Bridge? Oh, it was Larry. I don't think that's likely. It was cold enough to freeze your ears off. Only an idiot would go out there. <laughs> Unless they had something really important to do. Hmm. That's a shame. Hold on. Something's coming to me. An idiot may well have gone wandering out in that subarctic night. Your Honor, actually there just might be one individual who might be able to help us. Really? You know someone who might have seen the snowmobile on the night of the murder? I don't know for sure if he saw it or not. But, there are two things about him that do come to mind, which are... First, that he saw something incredible on the night of the murder. Second, he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> and the second... This individual that I'm thinking of went wandering outside on the cold night. In other words, he's our kind of idiot. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, who is this idiot that you talk about? I, I speak about none other than Larry. Bring him out here. Get him on the stage, guys. This guy must be a product of, of Jean-Luc. And oh god, I can't say all this fucking French shit. And the dog? I, I can't. Hmm. Whatever. This is Larry Butts. I decided that's despicable. Oh, wait. My bad. This is Larry Butts. A disciple of the victim. Her student. Interesting. And why was he wandering about outside? And that's. Your Honor, he was trying to get his dick wet. I have no idea how to tell you this. I can tell them about his designs for Iris but it may cause his credibility as a witness. I won't. He is, after all, an artist. He was perhaps searching for something in the snowy scenery that would have... That, <clears throat> in the snowy scenery that would move him. Although I cannot guarantee that is the reason. And so, this unfortunate, unreliable-looking man, what exactly was it that he saw? I don't know. I tend to extract that from him right here in this courtroom. Some of this youth has a witness immediately. I have no choice, do I? I believe he is the gallery for this trial. It will not take long to summon him. Very well. Larry... You may have escaped me yesterday, but today I'm going to get everything out of you. The court will now adjourn for 20 minutes break. Miss Von Karma, please see to preparing the next witness. Understood, Your Honor. Good. Well then, court is now in recess. Ugh. To be continued. All right. <laughs> this is a perfect stopping time for the stream because we are over our time limit, as it were. But, you know, uh, next time we come back to the stream, definitely gonna do this more. We'll probably finish it. I'm assuming we can finish it in four hours, right? We seem to be making good progress. Hopefully. Um, but yeah. So, have a little bit of announcement. Nothing too crazy, nothing too special, but... <coughs> This week was supposed to be my last week uh, taking on extra shifts at work or whatever because I was filling in for someone or whatever. But, yet again, I have the... Uh, they asked me to fill in again for next week. So, the stream schedule is still iffy, right? But I think I might be able to have some free time uh, either tomorrow afternoon... Well, I say tomorrow afternoon. That'll be today because I'm on the East Coast. So, like, the afternoon, or probably Sunday, maybe? Something like that. 
So I don't know. If I have time, I'll if I think I would have time, I'll put it in the schedule. But other than that, next time we come back to the stream, it's going to be more Phoenix Wright. And hopefully we can finish it because, oh, you know, I would like to finish this. I would like to finish this and move on to the other stuff we have to do. And there's a bunch of games coming out in the summer. And to be honest, I would like to, I think I would like to play a uh, Ratchet and Clank when that comes out, you know, maybe do a quick stream of like the, uh, of like the other game of the remake or whatever that they did. The remake of the movie of the game that's based off the movie of the game <laughs> or wherever the fuck. But, you know, until then, uh, the stream schedule is pretty up in the air. So try and look out. Try and look out on the community tab on the YouTube page. Also, for the playthroughs that need to be uploaded right now, I'm working on I'm working on editing and rendering out um, the Resident Evil 4 playthrough. So maybe by tonight, the Uncharted, Sonic, and Resident Evil 4 playthroughs will be up. If not, I'll try and get one of those up by tonight. And that's pretty much it. Uh, what else is there? Nope, nothing else. So, yeah. For those who came live, thank you very much. Also, for those who still support me, thank you very much. Because I know I haven't been able to stream as much lately. And I greatly appreciate it. Uh, to those who are watching the VODs, I'm, I'm happy that you come and you check back every once in a while. And for those who see this on YouTube, who won't be until like, I don't know, probably like a week or two for now or some shit. Try, try to come and catch them live if you can, whenever the stream schedule gets back to normal. But until then, that's going to be it for now. So, as always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Stay happy. Stay healthy. And take care. I'm a chef What else should I be? Please don't take off my